Rocky has starred in some of the biggest films of all time, earning worldwide critical acclaim and an Academy Award nomination. But there's still one question that haunts the career of Samuel L. Jackson. Are you ready for some football? The Kansas City Chiefs began assembling the NFL's best record back in September. They won their first two games of the season and has featured dramatic finishes that have gone down to the final seconds and beyond. It was overtime versus the Raiders in week three. The Chiefs record was now 3-0. Overtime when one misstep can mean disaster or when the game can end in explosive fashion. Week six, Chiefs versus Chargers in overtime. Just the 14-yard line. Uh-oh. Van over. A pass to 30. He's gone. Van over is almost gone. And now he is officially gone. Win number five on the year. Last month, a photo of Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Happy you're with us. There's a lot of drama around this one tonight. The Miami Dolphins got off to a great start this season. They were 4-0. Many people had picked them to go to all the way to the Super Bowl. They had spent lavishly in the free agent market. They felt that their defense, a young defensive team, was going to improve dramatically. But they come into tonight struggling at 7-6, and six, and this is a team that is under fire here in South Florida, as is their legendary coach, Don Shula, the winningest coach in the history of the NFL. They desperately need a win tonight to preserve their hopes for a playoff spot. And meanwhile, the Kansas City Chiefs, they wouldn't, they're not expected to do much in the AFC West for San Diego, and the Raiders figured to be uh, big winners there. But the Chiefs come in with the best record in the NFL at 11-2. And, and if they win tonight, they get the first week of the playoffs off. They know if they win two of their last three games, Al, and it's been an incredible season, they win two of the last three games. It's home field advantage all the way through the playoffs for Kansas City. Frank, I think a lot of people downplayed this team because Joe Montana retired, and Steve Bono took over at the age of 33. He'd been Montana is back up in San Francisco but he's done a very functional and efficient job. This is an offense without a lot of bells and whistles. The great running back of course is Marcus Allen coming off a terrific week the ageless wonder at the age of 35 but this team wins for the same reasons Marty Schottenheimer's teams have always won a great defense. They're allowing only 16 points a game and a terrific turnover differential. They very rarely cough the ball up and very frequently take the ball away. This is the sixth consecutive year the Chiefs have gone to the playoffs but they've always had to play a first round game. Now if they can win two of their remaining three not only do they get the bye but they'll make certain at least on the AFC side the road to the Super Bowl will go through Kansas City tonight they face the Dolphins Dan we were here three weeks ago for the Dolphins against the 49ers the big story was Don Shula. 21 days later the big story is Don Shula. It hasn't changed at all has it Al. Don Shula has really become a lightning rod for this football team that has lost six of their last nine games. It has been the most difficult season of his illustrious NFL career. And you have to say that 345 wins in this league should get you something. And for Don Shula I believe that something is respect. I think he deserves respect from the fans from some members of the media but more importantly he deserves respect from his players who as a group and I don't want to include all of them in this but enough of them have underachieved here in 1995 to put them in the precarious playoff position that they are in. The Dolphins control their fate. If they win the remaining three games, they'll be in the playoffs. They have a chance even to win the AFC East if a combination of things happen. This is a defining football game for the Miami Dolphins franchise tonight. This team has not created a turnover in a month of football. And if they don't create one tonight, they'll lose and their season will be over. Well, a guy who always commands respect is the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, Marty Schottenheimer, and he's down on the field with Lynn Swan right now. And he just ran over there, too. I'll tell you, Marty, this is always a dangerous time of the year, as I remember, because you wrap up a division title. Sometimes guys relax a little bit. You play against a team, still in the hunt, playing desperate football. How do you keep your team focused on winning this game? Well, I think you only have to look back at our last three outings against Miami. They haven't been very pretty for us, and we've got to do something about that. Uh, I don't have any question we're ready to play tonight. The question is, I'm sure Miami is, and we, do we match up with them? What do you anticipate their defense will try and do to stop Bono and Allen? 
Well, I think they're going to play the defense predominantly and over front with zone coverage and a little man to man in there. I don't see Miami changing anything drastically. I know you like a good fight, Marty. Good luck. Okay. All right. Now, when you're 11 and 2, that also allows you some flexibility in what you do with personnel. To that end, Marty Schottenheimer is not going to play Derek Thomas. He has a groin pull. He is not even suited up for tonight's game. Now. All right, thank you, Lennon. That means we'll see a lot of Anthony Davis at linebacker. Pete Stoyanovich to kick off to the rookie tonight. Up to the 28-yard line. A 19-yard run back, and that's where the Kansas City Chiefs will take over. Steve Bono first appeared with the Vikings in 85, played with the Steelers during the strike in 87, then to San Francisco, now in Kansas City. And he has Marcus Allen at running back and Kimball Anders, who catches a lot of balls at fullback. Davis and Dawson are the wideouts. And Cash, the tight end. Old Zock, Runhart, Shields, and Sigler, the interior five. Marcus Allen in motion on first down from the 28-yard line. And up the middle goes Kimball Anders, who picks up three to the 31. Now the Miami defense, and they have really struggled. Cross, Bowens, Klingbile, and Coleman, the linebackers, Singleton is back. He missed last week with a shoulder. Cox and Hollier. And in the secondary, J.B. Brown, one of the corners, is hurt. Buckley takes his spot along with Vincent. Stewart and Oliver are the safeties. Second and seven, a double tight end set now for Kansas City. And Webster Slaughter is in the game at wide receiver. Cash in motion. Bono, good play faker. Locks one into the arms of Derek Walker, the tight end, and he has a first down up at the 43-yard line. The game's initial first down. Troy Vincent with the tackle. But on the little rollout, and he is a good play faker, Al. He can really hide the football well, and a lot of the Miami Dolphins were fooled on that. But again, it's a very conservative offense. Paul Hackett calls the plays from up above. Former San Francisco 49er offensive coach, much like the 49er offense for Kansas City. From the 43 yard line, Marcus Allen puts that the ball, ball came loose. Down. It's loose. It's a loose football at the 45 yard line, and Miami has it. Well, Miami gets that turnover finally. It was a game, what, November 5th, the last time that they forced the opponents into a turnover. Unbelievable. Four games. Yeah. They didn't have to wait long tonight. A gift from the Chiefs. Kimball Anders, and he actually it. is losing that ball, guys, before he even gets hit. Never controlled it. Tim Bowens comes up with the football, makes the hit, and is at the bottom of the pile. And so the Kansas City Chiefs, who lost in the playoffs here last year to Miami because of turnovers, cough it up, and it's first down Miami at the 45-yard line. Dan Marino at quarterback. O.J. McDuffie is the man in motion. And it's Bernie Parmalee cutting it back for a game of six to the 39-yard line. The future Hall of Famer, Dan Marino, out of Pittsburgh, class of 83, 13th year at quarterback. And behind him, Bernie Parmalee is their feature back. Keith Byers, the fullback. Fryer and McDuffie outside. Eric Green, former Steeler. The tight end, Webb, Sims, Ruddy, McHale, and Milner. Milner is a rookie from Houston, and he will have his hands full tonight as he lines up very often facing Neil Smith. Second down and four at the 39-yard line. Marino has time, checks off, and then the pass is incomplete. Parmalee never had it. He was hit by George Jameson as the ball arrived. And Smith had Marino. He had his hands on the back of Dan Marino's jersey as he was throwing. We're going to see a lot of Neil Smith tonight. Smith working on Milner in the defense for Kansas City. Smith, Phillips, Sally Amua having a good year. And Vaughn Booker really emerging. Jamison, Simeon, and now Anthony Davis spelling Derek Thomas. Not suited tonight. The secondary, Carter and Hasty at the corners. Washington and Collins. The safeties mark the longtime cornerback. There's Derek Thomas, not in uniform tonight. Lynn Swan said he wanted to play. Marty Schottenheimer said you're going to rest. Third down and four from the 39. Marino under pressure and throws an interception into the arms of William White. In in the nickel, and White is out of bounds at the 48 of Miami. So each team turns the ball over in the first two minutes and 27 seconds of the game. 
Well, Dan Marino has thrown his share of interceptions in his illustrious career. Not many of them have been as ugly as that one, guys. We're in a dolphin within 15 feet of William White. Firebird waits. 305 horsepower comes to life. Ram air induction turns air into fuel in a rush. Firebird, you're ready to fly. So how's your headache? Well, it's gone. That was fast. Mm. So the Tylenol I gave you worked, even on your really tough headache. Tylenol worked great, even on my tough headache. So you were wrong. I was wrong. More than aspirin, more than ibuprofen. For headaches, doctors recommend extra strength Tylenol the most. I like a guy who can admit he's wrong. I'm wrong a lot. Almost home. Thank goodness. You're exhausted. How'd you guess? Quick, what are you gonna cook for dinner? Dinner? Okay, pick up chicken. Pizza? Boring. Tacos? Tacos! The new Taco Bell Fiesta family meal. No. Ten tacos or bean burritos any way you pick. I like it. Plus nachos, bell ground and cinnamon twist for four. The Fiesta family meal. Dinner for four starting at $7.99. Pick one up when you get Joey from soccer. Joey? Soccer? Introducing Border Buck Gift Certificates. A new way to stuff stockings only from Taco Bell. Right here, Dan Marino's gonna make a decision. He knows he's pressured by Neil Smith. He's gonna throw the ball, but he's hit in the act of throwing and can't put anything on it whatsoever. Right into the arms of William White for the, by far and away, the easiest interception in his career. Sometimes as a quarterback, you just gotta eat it. First down, Kansas City at the 48. Bono, and the pass is picked off by Troy Vincent. This is amazing. Vincent into Kansas City territory to the 44-yard line. In two minutes and 38 seconds, we've had three turnovers. Well, that pass was almost as ugly as the other one. And not a Kansas City Chief near that one. And Bono just put it up there. We talked about the wind swirling, but I don't think that has had any impact at all. Two very poorly thrown passes. Both of them picked off. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. Look, it's a Pontiac Sunfire. Now, if you take yours dog sledding in the Yukon, all that interior room means for once, your sled dogs won't argue about who gets in front. Or if you take your Pontiac Sunfire zipping over to that Pisa place, the sport suspension and high revving engine mean you'll really enjoy driving it at the full tilt. Pontiac Sunfire. Finally, a real set of wheels you can really afford. Our truck has broken down. We need help. Better call Dad Collect. Mike! What, girl? I should dial 1-800-COLLECT? I'll save Dad lots of money on the car? And come Christmas, there'll be extra presents under the tree? Aw, oh, thanks, girl. 1-800-COLLECT. Tuesday, is Tony's son being influenced by a bad kid? He's 11 and he has hair growing on his lip. Yeah, but so did you. Tony Danza stars in an all-new Hudson Street Tuesday. Last week, Steve Bono came out of the Raider game with an injured right hand. The flexor tendon in his on his ring finger, the right hand, and 
They said it's not bothered his throwing the ball. He has a tiny little splint on there, but uh, you just have to wonder. That ball was uh, really thrown ugly. There's a look at that little splint. It's not even a splint. He has a tape around it. And I asked him before the game, is it bothering you? He said, absolutely not. And Marty Schottenheimer told us yesterday he had a fabulous week of passing mm -hmm. the ball during practice. That was Vincent's fifth interception of the season. Here's Parmalee now swinging to the outside. And Hasty finally drags him down from behind. It'll be second down and about four. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. And Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. I want to go back and do my part of the open over again. I'm, I'm talking about Marty Schottenheimer's <laughs> teams never giving the ball up. A fumble and an interception. First two series. Second down and four from the 38 yard line. Well the Dolphins are just trying to make up for lost time. <laughs> yeah. They took a month off. Here's Parmalee seeking the first down and he's close to it at the 35 yard line. Tackled there by Neil Smith. Oh, and Parmalee got a great block from Eric Green who's been a bit of a disappointment for the Dolphins. The big tight end that came over from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it was Green who sprung the opening for Parmalee. And he, as we look at Eric Green, only 34 receptions on the season after two tremendous years with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And of course, in and out of the lineup because of a knee problem. And there is a look at big Eric Green, 6'5 and 280 pounds. He's going to spend a lot of time over there on that right side to help out Milner. Third and a short one. Three tight end set. And Keith Byers in the game as well to provide leverage. And Parmalee, straight arms hasty. And he's finally run out of bounds at about the nine yard line. When you called it Dan, Eric Green just rolled up Neil Smith to spring Parmalee. He pins him to the inside and then they come all the way across the court formation with Keith Sims, a left guard. There's just a huge hole there. That's as well as it can be blocked at the point of attack. Look at this hole for Parmalee. Byers does his job. Sims does it. Eric Green does it. And then this is a pretty nice little straight arm by Parmalee on Hastings. First and goal just inside the nine. A 27-yard run for Parmalee. And now Bernie gets taken down. We talked about Vaughn Booker really coming on. Prime example right there. And what Marty Schottenheimer told us, the highest priority he has is stopping the running game of the Miami Dolphins. They didn't do it last year. They lost twice to them last year. They gained 130 yards during the season, 144 in the playoff game, and they couldn't control the running game. And this was the priority. And that time, Booker with a fine play. Well, it looked like Richmond Webb and Keith Sims were going to do a combination block, and they just let Booker go completely. Neither one of them touched him. Two pro bowlers have it right through them. Second and goal. receiver was O.J. McDuffie. It'll be third and goal from the 15-yard line. Dan Marino never shy about e expressing himself when something doesn't go right. Was either talking to himself or one of the Dolphin receivers. I think about there was, receivers. There, there was nobody there. There were a couple of them in the same area. He is not happy with it. Hmm. One of the fiercest competitors this league has seen in a long time. Not a not a robot by any means at the quarterback position is Dan Marino. Dan is 0 for his first three. Third and goal from the 15. Marino steps up, slings it, and it's nearly picked off. White got a hand on it, had the <laughs> earlier interception, and it was nearly intercepted, but at least it drops incomplete. Mark Collins almost came up with it, and Stojanovic will attempt a field goal. Dan trying to squeeze one into Gary Clark and just put it in the hands of William White. He just had too much on it for White to handle it. There's Gary Clark standing right at the goal line, the intended receiver, and almost picked off again. 33-yard field goal attempt now for Pete Stojanovic. John Kidd does the holding. Swirling breeze at Joe Robbie Stadium, and he hooks that one through. of Barry Sanders. Only one has his acceleration. Only one has his control. Only 
one has such breathtakingly perfect balance. Seville STS with the North Star system. A great performer creates a higher standard. Would we claim the Norelco razor shaves closer than ever? Without hundreds of tests to back it up. Say our precision groove helps the Norelco lift and cut system shave closer without proof? No. We wouldn't say it's our closest shave ever without science, sensors, tests. But of all the tests that prove it's closer, the most convincing requires a personal touch. The Norelco razor, our closest shave ever. There are two kinds of people in the world. Those who say they'll get around to it. And those who actually do. For those who've discovered there's greater satisfaction in putting things up than in putting them off, we present VersaPack from Black & Decker, a rechargeable battery system that powers an entirely new line of cordless tools. From now on, it's how things get done. Our country's top skaters are teaming up for a special delivery. They'll go head-to-head -to, -head to see who's first class in the United States Postal Service Skating Challenge, Saturday on ABC. The Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, based in Pompano Beach, just north of Miami, and uh, floating high above Joe Robbie Stadium, no doubt being buffeted tonight. Windy night in South Florida, but the temperature around 70 degrees. Winnie the Pooh would have called this a blustery day. Blustery. <laughs> yep. So Yanovich's kick taken at the 11-yard line by Tamaric Vanover. And he's taken down up at the 33-yard line. Well, the all-time record most consecutive games, no opponents' turnovers, was set by Dave Shula's Cincinnati Bengals last year with four and tied by Don's team this year. They quickly Must be got out cut. of that mode. <laughs> yep. And Real here's, fast. Here's how it happens. I say it must be genetic. First four possessions of the game, a fumble, an interception, an interception, and a Miami field goal. But Miami's been the beneficiary of two turnovers and converted them into only three points. Now Bono throws, and it's caught. Uh, we'll see if it's caught at the 42-yard line. The Dolphins say no, and one official comes in, and the umpire says no as well. They only needed one to agree with them, and they they got the umpire. I don't know. That was another uh, poorly thrown ball by Bono. Slaughter had beaten uh, Terrell Buckley by a considerable margin. He had good protection. He, it was just a bad throw. And I just wonder about that hand. I really... This uh, he has plenty of time to throw the ball. Plenty. Look at the ball. Look at the ball. Now you tell me, is that a spiral? Mm -hmm. I think he's got a problem. Uh, so, Gunther Cunningham, the defensive coordinator, Paul Hackett, running the offense in the Kansas City booth, second and ten. Allen on an old USC sweep up to the 39-yard line, just the way they did it at Troy in the early 80s. Dwight Hollier makes the tackle. Marcus, a graduate of USC and the Heisman Trophy winner there. We did it out of the single wing, of course, Allen. <laughs> I didn't want to Our bring highlights for uh, black and white. <laughs> but what a remarkable athlete and performer and person this man is. He has been an extraordinary. He's really given the Chiefs a tremendous lift. They brought in a new office to Paul Hackett. He picked it up like that. He has meant so much to this football team. Third and four. Willie Davis in motion from the 39 yard line. And the pass is too high for Anders and he gets knocked down by Oliver at the end of the play. So the Miami defense dominating early on two turnovers and forcing a three and out here and this will be the first punt of the game. I but, think Lewis no, no, Oliver had, really no, lucky. Had, excuse me Dan but yeah. no, he's yet to throw a good pass. I agree with you and Oliver should have been flagged for a late hit here. This is a blatant late hit by Lewis Oliver. That ball it had been gone for two seconds when he comes up and lays a shot on the receiver. That that should have drawn a flag. Louis Aguiar having a Pro Bowl type year, the punter, and he booms this one inside the five, takes a sideways bounce, oh. and just does cross the goal line. Touchback flag down back at the line of scrimmage. Johnny Greer is the referee and uh, he'll make the first call of the night. I think you got a pretty good idea of which way the wind is gusting. Ineligible man downfield. 
So Greer will talk it over with the Dolphins, and the Dolphins have the option now of having Kansas City kick it again or with taking it to the 20-yard line. I'd be tempted to take it at I the 20. Too. With that, with the wind at his back like that, uh, I think they run the risk of being pinned inside their 20. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be tempted to just take it at the 20 and settle for that. It could be worse. Eligible yeah, member of the kicking team downfield. Number 51 is decline. First down. Well, here's the play on third down, and look how late this hit is by Lewis Oliver on Kimball Anders. Extremely lucky for the Dolphins, there was no play. Visa, the world's number one card, presents number one. This linebacker enjoyed a sacker Shangri-La when he pierced the quarterback's protection a record number of times in one game. Who is pro football's number one pass pocket pillager? There is only one thing you need. And bring me back a t-shirt. Visa, the only card accepted at the 1996 Olympic Games. And the hat would be nice, too. Jerry, you see what I'm talking yes. about? Good. All right. Let's get on that quarterback. In 1990, Derek Thomas got on the Seahawks quarterback a record seven times as he became the NFL's number one pass pocket pillager. Jerry, good job. Hey, guys. Guys. What do they call this? Bud ice? It's ice rude. No, it's a bottle looks like ice. Bottle does look like ice. It's ice rude, Jack. It's a bad head. The bottle is jagged and it looks like ice. It's ice ice rude. Jack. Jack. Jack and Jack. 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 you guys. Take it outside. Okay, it, coach. Bud Ice, the official bear of the Hanson Brothers. Stupid machine took my quarter. Yes, there were times I thought you knew that I spit up. <laughs> Everyone celebrating Sinatra 80 Years My Way Thursday. On the Chiefs bench, Dan Sally Amua replacing a contact lens. So uh, we'd like to get Marino in his sights. But for the moment, he's on the bench. And you've got Keith Trailer at tackle. And Darren Mickle spelling Booker on this series. First down Miami at the... 20-yard line, 8.16 to go in the quarter. 3-0 Dolphins. Marino looking for his first completion. And there it is, into the arms of Irving Fryer. 15 yards and a first down into the arms of the man who caught the touchdown pass last week that may have salvaged Miami's season. Now at 33 years old, not having the year that he had a year ago, but that was his 49th reception on the season. Had a few drops. Few complaints for the fans here in South Florida, but a good move. He put a good drive on Hasty. Hasty respecting his speed to go deep. First down at the 35 yard line. Dolphins trying to establish the run, but they don't on that play. Earlier, Parmalee broke one for 27. This one just a yard tackled by Joe Phillips. This defense has changed for Kansas City with the addition of Gunther Cunningham, a new. Defensive coordinator, of course, with Derek Thomas out of the lineup, pulled groin. Marty didn't want to take a risk that he was going to pull it and hurt it further. And there is Gunther Cunningham, who came in as a really a defensive line coach, and then he took over when Dave Adolph left and went to San Diego, and he's done a fine job. This is an attack defense, and they have not been like this for several years. Second and eight, Terry Kirby in the game in the backfield. He stays in the block. Marino gets flushed out. Pursued from behind and then throws it away. It'll be third down and eight. Pursued by Darren Mickle. Before the night is done, Marino will break another mark in all likelihood. That for most passes in a career, another of Fran Tarkenton's old marks will go down. It'll really just complete his run on the record book. He will have really achieved all of the major records and Fran in attendance here tonight. The ceremony down on the field prior to the game honoring Dan Marino and Fran was here and kind enough to have some kind words for the man that has moved him into second place in all the major passing records in National Football League history. 
Marino reluctantly and frustratingly has to take a timeout. The NFL playoffs kick off December 30th on ABC Sports. <laughs> Amigos, estamos perdidos. Não esquenta. Eu peço o mapa pelo correio eletrônico. Aqui? Eu estou rodando o S2 Warp Connect da IBM. Ele me dá acesso remoto ao servidor da minha rede. Ao meu work group, até a internet. Onde é que você arranjou isso? Eu liguei para um 800 call IBM. I do best. I take scores. You do what you do best. Try to stop guys like me. Between a relentless cop, all I am is what I'm going after. A ruthless thief. I'm the worst trouble you ever had. <laughs> and his reckless partner. A bank is worth the risk. Obsession knows no limits. You are going down. Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, Heat, rated R. Starts Friday, December 15th at a theater near you. This can't be champagne. I like it. Sparkling, delicious. No champagne tastes like Balladore. Frankly, I think it tastes better than champagne. One sip of Balladore, one sip says it all. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. This took place about 20 minutes before the game. Dan Marino acknowledged by the crowd. Don Shula, team owner Wayne Heisinger. Heisinger in your picture right there. Fran Tarkenton down on the field. And he's broken the marks for completions, touchdown passes, yardage, and 26 more passes. And he'll tie Tarkenton's record for most passes ever. Third down and eight after the timeout. And Marino throws. And that is incomplete. Mark Collins got an arm on it. Gary Clark, the intended receiver, and in the swirling wind with Neil Smith holding his leg, Marino starts out one for seven. Well, that one should have been picked off by Mark Collins, and Collins knows it. He was right there, and I just don't think he expected the ball to get there as quickly as it does. I mean, a lot of times, if you haven't been catching a lot of Marino balls, it travels a lot faster than you're going to think, and that sometimes affects a defensive player. Well, the Chiefs already minus Derek Thomas, and you saw Neil Smith go hobbling off. John Kidd to punt to Marek Vanover to run it back. 45-yard punt to the 19-yard line, and the rookie out of Florida State who played in the Canadian Football League last year takes it back to the 36. 6.30 to go in the quarter. They said they could deliver them by 8 a.m. tomorrow. That's great. Or by 10.30 tomorrow. Uh-huh. Or on Monday by 8, 10.30 or 3. Or same day. Valentine's Day. Groundhog Day. On Saturday. Or even today. Oh, I forgot. My now, with same day 8 a.m. and 10.30 delivery, no one gives you more delivery options than FedEx. Hey, when can FedEx deliver those boxes? Gloria. Well, they could get it there by 8 a.m. or by... FedEx. Absolutely, positively, anytime. Marcus Allen on first down for Kansas City up to the 39 yard line. That's a gain of four yards. It'll be second down and six, and they work on the leg of Neil Smith. Have to keep in mind Kansas City with that 11 and 2 record. I doubt they'll be reckless. I would think that Marty Schottenheimer, with any sort of a negative report from the medical staff, that there's a chance of anything happening to Neil Smith or any player like him that might keep him from playing a little farther down the road he's, he's not going to be in there anymore today second and six Anders in motion Greg Hill is in the game and last year's top pick puts All the ball again. on the ground and Kansas City a team that had turned the ball over 16 times all season coming in has just coughed it up for the third time in nine and a half minutes Tim Bowens recovers Kansas City well ahead in giveaway takeaway ratio of the league coming into tonight so uncharacteristic of them well, there's Tom Olivadotti making noise on the Dolphins sideline. Why, I don't know. But I know one thing. Marty Schottenheimer, the first couple of times, has been very 
benevolent to his troops as they come over to the sidelines. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He's going to have a meltdown pretty soon. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chiefs are playing like a team that expected to mail this in. And that just doesn't work in the NFL. That's Tim Bowens just ripping it out of there. And recovering it as well for the Daily Double. 43-yard line. Marino going deep. And that's nearly picked off. Fryer, the intended receiver. Carter covering on the play. Irving Fryer ends up breaking that thing up. Or I think Dale Carter does intercept it. Irving Fryer becomes the defender. Good coverage by Carter out on the left corner. He's turning into one of the fine cornerbacks in the league. Pro bowler a year ago. Great positioning and Fryer did save what would have been an interception had he not got that hand in there. The two quarterbacks tonight a collective two of twelve. Second down and ten from the 43 yard line. And it's Kirby slithering through for a gain of five to the 38. And well, Derek Thomas is in street clothes, and Neil Smith is going back to the locker room. The one two punch, the heart and soul of that defense, missing in action. They were looking at Neil Smith on the bench, and of course, we talked about uh, Derek Thomas out of a game. Uh, they maybe just conservatively keeping him out tonight, but he has a slight pull groin. But Neil Smith, they were looking at the inside of his leg, not necessarily the knee. Well, all I know is pressure on Dan Marino is what counts, and 17 sacks collectively are out of this game for the Chiefs. Third and six, Juan Booker moves over to the left side and does a spin move, but Marino gets it away, and the pass is caught by Irving Fryer. He is wrapped up immediately by Carter, and forward progress will take him only to the 32-and-a-half yard line. And not a first down 33 yard line it was at the end of the last Miami Dolphin possession when Neil Smith got hurt let's take a look he's on the left side of your screen he's going to come in from behind watch his leg whip around mm -hmm. right there in a collision with one of his teammates was that Booker it was either Booker or Mickle coming from the other side you see when his leg kind of whipsaws through the air right here it's with Vaughn Booker and you can see that's where the injury occurred and he already snaps it up in, in pain. And we'll pass along any injury information we get as soon as we get it. They'll be short of the first yep. down here. One credit uh, Dale Carter again with fine coverage on Fryer to prevent the first down and the offensive unit comes back onto the field with fourth and one inside the 35 yard line of KC. And especially fine tackle Frank when you consider how strong Irving Fryer is. He is a a solid 200 pounder not easy to make him go backwards. This is the move to make here otherwise you're looking at a 50 yard attempt and a swirling win and if you miss it Kansas City would take over at about the 40 or 41. Well we know Barry Switzer would go for it. <laughs> yes. Fourth in the yard to the 33 and Marino juggles the snap and recovers and throws complete to Ronnie Williams to the 20 yard line and for the 10th time in 12 chances this year Miami converts on fourth down only the third reception of the year for Ronnie Williams and that was a frantic looking play bobbled by Marino somehow he got possession I think he had intended to go again to Fryer but yeah. Williams was the open target and he was able to get it there well Dan's trying to get out early where is that ball that's <laughs> everywhere outstanding job of concentration by Marino First down at the 20-yard line. McDuffie comes in motion. And they run it off the weak side, and Parmalee takes it inside the 18-yard line, a gain of two, close to three. Second and about seven. Good matchup a week from tonight. We go to three comp park. Knee candlestick. Minnesota against the 49ers, the Vikings and the 49ers next Monday night from San Francisco. Not a bad duo, Steve Young and Warren Moon. He's back on again. He's hot with the Vikings, and they need a win. Second down seven from the 17. Three minutes to go in the quarter. Marino the play fake, and then Byers makes the catch, and he gets tackled out in the open field by Anthony Davis at the 15-yard line. It'll be third down and five coming up. That's not often you see Dan Marino break contain. That's how come he gets out there. I, I don't think the uh, Chiefs spent a lot of time this week working on uh, having Dan get outside the perimeter. But a bootleg is a bootleg, even if Dan Marino runs it. And this 
the play fake and out he comes and Vaughn Booker didn't honor his responsibility and you know why should he Dan's not really a threat to go anywhere with it third and five Miami up three nothing late first quarter Kirby one hands it but he had to reach for it and lucky is tackled at the 15 yard line no gain on the play and in comes Stojanovic Sally Mua and Davis in on the tackle and now Stojanovic comes in for about a 33 yard attempt what you see the Chiefs on that play there were their five defensive players that were immediately in the area for the tackle watch Kirby now he gets hit he one hands a fine catch but they're Chiefs everywhere that's called swarming defense and that's what the Chiefs have been doing all year long well when a defensive tackle ranges all the way out there to make the hit like Sally Amua did that's that's when you got a team that's hustling 33 yarder John Kidd puts it down and through the swirling wind Stojanovic converts for the second time in the game a minute 30 left in the opening quarter it's Miami six Kansas City nothing. Huh? That's good, Gloria. When can FedEx deliver these boxes? Well, they said they could deliver them by 8 a.m. tomorrow. That's great. Or by 10.30 tomorrow. Uh-huh. Or on Monday by 8, 10.30 or 3. Or same day. Valentine's Day. Groundhog Day. On Saturday. Or even today. Oh, I forgot. By now, with same day 8 a.m. and 10.30 delivery, no one gives you more delivery options than FedEx. Hey, when can FedEx deliver those boxes? Gloria? Well, they could get it there by 8 a.m. or by... FedEx. Absolutely, positively, anytime. Dan Marino, an uncommon start for him, 5 of 12 for 35 yards and one pick. Carl Hairston, the defensive line coach, going over things along with Marty Schottenheimer, who always tries to stay upbeat, his team 11 and 2. But even though they've clinched the West, as we mentioned at the very top, this is a team that is used to getting to the playoffs but has always played a first round game in the 90s. Now they're looking not only for that bye week, but the home field advantage throughout. Well, and what Marty has to be saying to these guys, I think, simply is, look how horribly we have played. Look how we have turned the ball over in our own territory. And gentlemen, in case you haven't noticed, a touchdown and an extra point will give us the lead. They're very fortunate to be in this position. There's a Vanover. There's a guy that could give him a touchdown. <laughs> yes. As we well know, we saw it on a Monday night. Featured it in our uh, opening tease tonight. He ran back that punt in overtime, and he collects this one at the three-yard line. He's chased down by Wilson. He escapes a tackle by Clark. And Vanover will give you a thrill, fumbles the ball out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. He has got great speed, and more than anything, he is so strong. Former Florida State football player taking the third round this year but actually played a year in the Canadian Football League at Las Vegas and and what a difference Paul Hackett and I were talking earlier he said instead of getting the ball at the 20 or the 23 or 4 we are getting the ball now at the 34 and 35 and they just love that as an offensive unit There's big Neal making his way back out to the Kansas City sideline Kansas City has turned it over three times in the quarter at the 36 now Marcus Allen at the age of 35 and steps out of bounds at the Miami 46 yard line broke a Terrell Buckley tackle and moves the ball for a gain of 19. Okay, that was a 35 year old juke on Terrell Buckley and Marcus <laughs> I'll tell you he is amazing and to go through what he did he, last week against the Raiders when he was just such a dominant force running the ball over over 120 yards rushing but watch the move he puts on Terrell Buckley. Buckley knows he's tackling a legend here. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> he just kicked right through it. From the 45-yard line, Bono fakes to Allen, buys time, finds the open man, and it's caught by Derek Walker, the tight end. First down at the Miami 28-yard line. Dwight Hollier makes the tackle. That's a gain of 17. And let's get a word from Lynn Swan. Lynn? Well, Al, Neil Smith went into the locker room. They, the report is it's a... Right leg contusion, the bruise, but when he walked out, he was telling me that he just got kicked or a leg whipped in the uh, thigh. They wrapped it, uh, and he didn't give any indication whether or not he felt he could go comfortably, so he's still questionable. Mm -hmm. Al? First down, Marcus Allen from the 28-yard line goes next to nowhere on what will be the final play of the quarter. Dwight Hollier makes the tackle, and that's the end of the first quarter. 
in Miami. The Dolphins six and the Chiefs nothing. And Monday Night Football returns after this message to work from our ABC stations. There are sure to be a few records set during the 1996 Olympic Games. And as the official airline, Delta has already set one. Of all U.S. airlines, only Delta flies smoke-free on every flight to every city worldwide. It's not something we did to win a gold medal. We did it so you could breathe a little easier. Delta Airlines. In shopping for a luxury performance sedan, Jay Kerness tested the Oldsmobile LSS against the fastest, most nimble machine on earth. Juma, the cheetah. The LSS's sports suspension and traction control attacked the course, as did the cheetah. But while he considered the LSS's precise handling quite impressive, there was one thing he failed to consider. Cheetahs are very sore losers. Will the LSS pass your test? Nice kitty. Go away. This is ABC. Florida sugar farmers working hard, supporting their families. Now some extremists want to impose a new two cent a pound tax just on sugar farmers and use the money to buy 130,000 acres of their land and then evict the farmers from their own property. Tax them, buy their land, kick them off. It's a tax hike and land grab that could cost 40,000 jobs across Florida. And it's wrong. Florida sugar farmers, jobs worth keeping. A monster sinkhole eats part of San Francisco. An update right after the game. Steve Bono again. You can see the right ring finger with the little piece of tape on. I don't think there's a splint there. You can use a splint during the week, but you can see the ball. Uh, not a tight spiral whatsoever. He does not have one of the great tight spirals, but I am I, I just have got to think something is bothering him. Yet Marty went on and on yeah. about how well he threw the ball all week during practice. Well, right. Maybe that's to spin. Yeah. I don't think he was lying to us. Maybe he was trying to convince himself. Second down and nine from the 27 yard line and the screen is set up for Anders and it is behind him and through his hands. Maybe he was. <laughs> Shit. Third and nine now. Last week when Bono went out Rich Gannon came in he hadn't played during the regular season and Gannon did a, 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 a very good job scored a touchdown there's Rich a, a long time backup but the, that augurs well for the future if they have to go to Gannon the team now has the confidence he can get the job done he did it last week in Oakland third down and nine from the 27 with protection and the pass is high and through the fingertips of Kimball Anders it'll be fourth down that one floated and Terrell Buckley thought he might have had a pick opportunity well you hate to harp on it but it is again another poorly thrown ball and it's kind of a, a breeze and it is gusty if you don't have a tight spiral you're going to lose it look at this ball hmm. Fourth down, Lynn Elliott now a 44-yard attempt. He missed two extra points last week in Oakland. Louis Aguiar holding 44-yard attempt. And that one is wide to the right. Sixteen seconds into the second quarter, six-nothing Dolphins.
Tom was completely surprised. Visa <laughs> Gold. Purchase power to make dreams come true. It's everywhere you want to be. Every few years, the world gathers to witness an unparalleled sports spectacle. The Truckathlon. Yeah! And to compete, you have to have a Ford Ranger 4x4. Because you'll need it switch on four-wheel drive for truck long jump. It's four-wheel anti-lock brakes for truck discus. And it's whopping four-liter V6 for truck hurdles. The Ford Ranger 4x4. You can't win without one. Next event, truck pole vault. Yes! Well, Charlie Gibson and Joan London will be there tomorrow for Good Morning America, and they'll uh, have a feature about extreme fighting, a combination of boxing, wrestling, and street fighting with practically no rules, and a look at the American pay-per-view phenomenon. That's tomorrow on GMA, Good Morning America. Charlie Gibson, he's, did you know he's that, a good football fan. He loves it. Did you know Charlie is a descendant of Charles Dana Gibson, the gentleman who created the Gibson Girls? You didn't know that. Yeah. True story. It's a truth. I'm not making that up. Here's Marino from the 35, and that's dropped by Irving Fryer. And Frank, you talked about the drop passes, and there were several of them last week and the week before, and one right here. Well, it wasn't the perfectly thrown ball, but it wasn't a hot ball, is one that I'm sure that Irving would tell you I should have caught. Marino actually looking off to the right, found the slot. Well, Irving knows you got to catch that. It's been a problem for these Dolphin receivers all season long. Extremely inconsistent. Second and ten, very unmarino-like numbers. Early second quarter, Miami on top, six nothing on two field goals, and Kirby gets taken down as he reaches the line of scrimmage. Dan Sally and Lua in on the tackle. Big Dan had a really an off year last year, guys, as you well know, but this year. He has really come on. He has, I think, made a real run at the Pro Bowl. And uh, I, most people in the AFC, myself included, think he deserves a spot on the AFC Pro Bowl team at defensive tackle. Mm -hmm. He's calling it the Honolulu year. Yeah. Well, a guy named Sally Amui ought to be over in Hawaii. <laughs> Third down and nine from the 36-yard line. Moreno out of the gun. Line does its job to buy him time, and that's a first down as old Jay McDuffie makes the catch up at the 49-yard line. They call him Mr. Third Down around here, and McDuffie comes up with another third down catch. That time Marino is really, I think he's starting to hit his stride now. That had a some smoke on it. It got out there quickly. The coverage wasn't too bad by number 34, Dale Carter. Hasty actually in the coverage on. McDuffie, but uh, that wasn't bad coverage. Marino just had a lot on it. First and ten up at the 49-yard line. Gary Clark in motion. Parmalee picks up about three. But one of the themes on talk radio around here and in the papers is, is this Don Shula's last game as the coach of the Dolphins at Joe Robbie Stadium. This team will finish on the road and two tough ones at Buffalo and then at St. Louis. And, well, nobody seems to know the answer to that right now. Don doesn't know. Wayne Heisinga has said he has not made up his mind, but that is the, the story in South Florida. Well, with that, we're all of it. We will talk to Don, an interview we did last night, and we'll hear from him at halftime. Second down and seven. And that's not one-handed by Parmalee, who had to reach back toward Anthony Davis was covering on the play. It'll be third down. We just don't want to absolve Don of any of the responsibility for what's happening to his team. But, you know, right there is a perfect example. There's Wayne Heisinga, the owner of the Miami Dolphins. That's the legendary Dolphin on his right, Dick Anderson, a great member of the Super Bowl teams. But Don Shula did not throw that pass Don Shula did not drop that ball and it's hard for me to imagine uh, to follow the logic of some people who say that Don Shula doesn't know how to prepare a football team anymore I find it hard to believe that he's forgotten how to do that third down and seven Marino avoids a sack and then under throws as it floats and the pass is incomplete intended for Randall Hill the pressure that time put on by Martin Bayless on the safety blitz he brought Bayless in actually to take the spot that uh, Ronnie Lott 
vacated when he was injured uh, before the season started. Uh, He's filled in very well for them. Comes in on their nickel defense. Good blitzing safety man. Big man, 6'2, 210 pounds. He was right in Marino's face, but Dan was able to step inside, be able to, and able to get the ball off and avoid the sack. And a good look at the competitive side of Dan Marino there as he unhappily came to the Dolphins bench. Mm. John Kidd to punt on fourth and seven. The flag goes down at the line of scrimmage. End over end boot. Fumbles it at the 15 yard line, and the Dolphins come up with it. Frankie Smith, at least for the moment. But a marker down at the line of scrimmage. And Kansas City indicating it's against Miami as they listen in on the conversation. Oh, it is. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. Procedure call against the Dolphins. Mike West off the special teams coach. Somebody moving a little quickly. He wants to know what happened. Johnny Greer will inform us. Mm -hmm. Illegal formation, number 29, offense. Lined up in the backfield. We'll penalize five yards and re-kick. That's Frankie Smith, the defensive back for the Dolphins, who's on their punt coverage unit. In fact, he wound up recovering that fumble. <laughs> or maybe he meant 49. Well, he called 29. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was one of the outside. Was Frankie Smith on the outside and lined up too deep? It's the only thing I can imagine. Well, you saw Shula's reaction. Now, kid, the kick again. And that one bounces at the two and takes a great Miami bounce. Spins it out at the five. The kickers work on that, and that time he hit it perfectly. They pin the Chiefs deep with 12-10, left in the half, 6-0, Miami. Ford Escort is a surprising car. Four cars, really. The three-door sport, the four-door sport, the five-door sport, and the wagon. You can pick one, any one, for the same low price of just $12,495, which is great because it includes dual airbags, air conditioning, power steering, power mirrors, and a stereo. And it's the only car in its class that can go up to 100,000 miles between recommended tune-ups. Wow, the surprising Ford Escort. Get one with everything, but get it to go. So what's it going to be, Dion? Football or baseball? Both, boss. Both? Both. Offense or defense? Both. Both? Both. 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 Pizza Hut. Meat lovers or stuffed crust pizza? Both. 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 Want it all? Now Pizza Hut offers our lovers line toppings. Meat lovers, pepperoni lovers, or supreme. Piled high in a stuffed crust pizza. So what will it be, Dion? 15, 20 million? Both. Both. You'll love the stuff we're made of. We were walking in circles. We're still dizzy. We never want to see a mall again, ever. We just want to stay here and watch a movie. Take a holiday from shopping. Make it a blockbuster night. Two cops, two partners, too close to the edge. Martin Lawrence, Will Smith, Bad Boys. What you gonna do? From Columbia TriStar Home Video, rated R. Rent it today. Is ABC flipped? You bet, Tim. For one night only, Roseanne and Coach are flipping places. That's Coach at 8, 7 Central and Roseanne at 9, 30, 8, 30 Central this Tuesday. Al Michaels with Frank Ifford, Dan Deardorff, and Lynn Swan in Miami with 12 10 to go in the first half. Miami leading 6 to nothing. Well, that was a tough penalty for Miami. They would have had that ball inside the 20, and it was a pretty picky call. Kansas City takes over at the five-yard line with Marcus Allen in motion. Bono on a roll, under pressure in the end zone, and the pass is incomplete. Pressure put on by Trace Armstrong, the former Chicago Bear. Let's go back and take a look at that punt that cost uh, the Dolphins possession of the football. Frank referred to it as Vicky, and, and he's right. Here's Frankie Smith down here at the bottom of your screen. 
take a look at where he is in relation to the line of scrimmage right here. He's really equidistant with the far Miami Dolphin wide out, and that appears to be really shaving it kind of close by the officials who ruled that he was too far off of the line of scrimmage in the backfield. On second and 10, Allen seeking breathing room. Takes it up to the 12-yard line. He's bumped down by Troy Vincent. Gain of seven. It'll be third down and three. Another thing about that penalty, this is the first year in 20 years that the Dolphins have been penalized more than their opponents. And it's very uncharacteristic, again, of a Don Shula coach team. Another last year, I guess, and then again this year. Third down and three. Just shy of the 13-yard line. Marcus Allen is split wide to the left. Keith Cash goes in motion. And Bono rolling and looking and throws, and the catch is made by Webster Slaughter up at the 19-yard line for a first down. Webster in his first year with Kansas City, and Marty Schottenheimer, of course, knows all about Slaughter. He had him when he coached at Cleveland. Yeah, and then he went off to Houston, and over 400 career receptions. Uh, really starting to fit into this offense. Over 7,000 yards. Now Vanover comes into the game as a wide receiver. He is slipped to the right, bottom of the screen, first down of the 20-yard line. And Bono going deep. It hangs up in the breeze, and it's incomplete. Davis had to wait for it. Buckley was there, and the wind just shot it down. Does that ball just go through Willie Davis's hands? It looks like it's coming down like a punt. And it, 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 he wasn't hit. That ball looked like it went right through his hands. Buckley had overrun the ball. The ball thrown short. And Bono again hung it up there. You could have almost called for a fair catch on this. Now, yeah. Willie Davis comes back for it. He was, no, I, Buckley was. He, he has nothing both, to do with it. He has both hands on it. it touched his arm a little bit. That shouldn't have affected him. Oh, boy. Second and ten now. Huh? It's a re fake reverse. Allen keeps it. And he gets banged down at the 23-yard line. Dwight Hollier in on the tackle. He's the second man to make contact with him. Buckley was the first. Third and seven upcoming. That's the best-looking play that went nowhere that we've seen <laughs> in quite some time. Well designed, Paul. <laughs> Just didn't work. He faked it to Vanover. He faked it to everybody. Yeah. But Malavadati's defense. Buckley stayed home, and he that was a fine tackle by Buckley. Tom's defense comes up big. Pitching a shutout to this point, 20 minutes into the game. Allen split left, third and seven. There's the corner blitz. Corner blitz, and Bono throws, and only one under there. there. So flags come down, and that's the corner blitz from Frankie Smith. That ball, I think, hit either Sigler or Shields. I think it hit Shields. Shields. Bono looking for that 305-pound receiver. He found him. That is a penalty mm -hmm. to throw it to an offensive lineman. <laughs> the illegal touching of a pass, number 68. Offense. That's a loss of down. Fourth down. Gentlemen, would you agree with me that to this point in time, this has been a sloppy football game? It, it's been played in fits and starts. And it's, again, so much drama involved around it. What's going on down here in Florida? And it was Shield number 68. That was a good move by Sigler to make him miss. He dodged it. He dodged it. Here's Aguiar, line drive end over end boot, and it rolls out of bounds at the 37. So Marino and the Dolphins take over there, 9:49 of the half, six to nothing, the Dolphins. Welcome to the greatest air connections of the past 25 years, brought to you by Southwest Airlines, celebrating its 25th anniversary. Southwest Airlines, the low fare airline.
Hosting the eventual Super Bowl champion Bears on Monday night, Dan Marino ensured the Dolphins' place in history as the only undefeated team by throwing three touchdown passes as Miami handed Chicago its only defeat the of the season. Ball is deflected in the air. Gotta go is coming two kinds. Not so good. That too. Let's get it go. And good. Got the flowers, Mark. Now, when are you sending you? Well, for the good kind, Southwest Airlines has gotta go fares from $19 on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. I'm real lonely. But hurry, because the going isn't always this good. Mom, I gotta go! Southwest, the low fare airline. It's a car that, when seen, leaves an impression. When driven, creates a stir. When owned, lives up to its promise. And when judged, wins award after award after award after award. The new Ford Taurus, the success story that never ends. Making the dream come true. Vikings head west. Frisco's the site. The Golden Gate is rocking here on Monday night. Larry Chambers is the captain. The Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes hovering above Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. Where ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. Hollywood Pictures, Nixon coming soon to the theaters everywhere. And Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? Dan Saliamua. <laughs> Trippingly off the tongue, huh? He fills that face mask, doesn't he? From the 37-yard line, Miami leading 6 to nothing. First and 10. Flags down. Parmalee tackled by Simeon after a gain of five. And we'll get the call from Johnny Greer. You know, thinking about this game, funny thing about it, so much expected of Miami, and that's why the fans are so disappointed, and yet very little is expected of Kansas City, relatively speaking, and that's why they have been as big a surprise as we've seen in the National Football League this year. Well, I think part of it, uh, too, Dan and Al, last year, Miami went, came within one field goal to going to the AFC Championship game. They were 10-6, and six and the defense was supposed to improve. They spent millions in free agency picking up the players they thought they needed got off to a great start and then it's totally fell apart mm -hmm. and it's been a shock here in South Florida well and really uh, everyone expected Kansas City to be in big trouble because of the absence of Joe Montana and it has really been anything but there's probably on first and five because you know Steve Bono was a question mark this is a this is a man who really had never even started an entire season in the National Football League before and who would have known and they guessed they thought obviously you know Carl Peterson and Marty Schottenheimer thought that he could do it but boy has he really lived up to their expectations it's big he had a big game remember we had him uh, Montana was hurt we had a game Kansas City Miami a year ago 320 yards and threw yeah. four three touchdowns but also three interceptions they got behind early and uh, he threw some interceptions and he performed well that night well he's a perfect fit with the offense they run and with Paul Hackett and having backed up Montana as Marino throws and Fryer makes the catch and Irving takes the ball into Chief territory first down at the 49 yard line thank you Irving <laughs> Which team's 11 and 2? Yeah. Well, I don't blame anybody here on the Miami Dolphins team in, in trying to get them kick started. Fire got matched up with Hasty and uh, made, a, made a fine play there. Irving with the reception that won the game against Atlanta last week. Although he had some drops during the game and bobbled that one, which won it on the last play. Marino on first down from the 48, and the catch is made by McDuffie. Breaks a tackle, and that makes him a first down. 11 yard pickup to the 37 yard line. And McDuffie does it again. He is, gets another first down. He just makes plays. He good return man, excellent return man. 
but seems to find the open spot. And Marino more and more is looking for McDuffie. Got him team, got him lined up with the linebacker, Tracy Simeon. Marino sees that and gets the ball to him. First down. Harmony. Myers can't lay down the block on Smith, and then Carter comes up to help out to make the stop at the 36 yard line. Frank, you're talking about O.J. McDuffie and, and the way that he has become a part of the Dolphins' offense. Uh, that's exactly, I think, what the Chiefs have to do with Tameric Vanover. He, he started as the return man, the explosive guy who can make something happen. Well, I think that Vanover has to become a part of the Kansas City offense, just like McDuffie. Throw him the short passes, put him in a position to break some tackles, and explode for a big game. And we'll see that, I'm sure. Second down, eight. Here's Parmalee. And Bernie with a nice move before Hasty takes him down, but he takes the football away. However, the official said the play is over. The play is over. Miami's ball. Boy, Bernie Parmalee has been a shining light in a, in a big darkness here in Miami. Free agent came up as a free agent in 92 and has become the starting running back after specializing on special teams and is now over 700 yards rushing. Very consistent player. Good receiver out of the backfield. Makes a good move here. Covers up the football and does he lose it? No, he's down before he was taken away by Hastings. Third and a long yard, just inside the 29. Parmalee following Byers, and he lunges, and I believe has the first down at the 26 and a half. That's how about enough? How about that pitch for Marino? <laughs> he, he even throws bullets when he's pitching it to a running back. That thing looked like it took Parmalee by surprise. Parmalee had to catch it. <laughs> I bet you when That's Dan Bowles he throws it through the back wall. <laughs> oh, he slowed it down, but that had something on it. It had a little mustard on it. <laughs> but it was in the right place. Good second effort two by Parmalee to pick up that first down. First down, Dolphins at the 27. 520 to go in the half. Miami up six to nothing. Marino to Parmalee, but a nice read on the play by Jamison. That was his responsibility to stay with Bernie, and he turns it into a three-yard loss. Marino would have preferred to work downfield, but he was pressured from right up the middle. I think it was Salimua. Salimua with six sacks, and that's from playing that interior spot, so you know he's having a super, superb year. Second and let's go to 12. Two yard loss at the 29. 444 to go in the first half. Five man rush. They pick up Davis and the pass is caught by Fryer. Had position on Hasty and it will be first and goal at the five. 24 yards. A Dan Marino throw. He's got the confidence. Not bad coverage. Hasty on Fryer. And Marino put it. To where he thought his man had the advantage and Fryer went up and came down with it. Real good coverage by Hasty. Reads the eyes, but he does not look back and see the ball. First and goal from the five. Kirby takes it close to the two-yard line, ridden down by Tracy Simeon. Four minutes to go in the first half. Tenth play of this drive. It began at the 38-yard line. Miami's 38. Kirby goes nowhere, taken down back of the line of scrimmage. Well, Kirby makes the decision that he's going to dance to the outside. That play intended to go in the middle. Unfortunately, his lead blockers got knocked backwards. When uh, Dan does not like the play that they are calling for him, he waved it off. And this will be a Dan Marino special. <laughs> he has something he wants to run. And they face a, a defense that doesn't have Derek Thomas. 
groin pull. Not suited tonight. Third down goal. They were going to bring Clark in. He waved him off. This is a Marino special. Split back set. McDuffie comes in motion to the inside. And Marino throws to McDuffie. That's a pretty good special. All right, Dan. Marino coming to the sidelines, and he'll say, that's what I had in mind. Well, Don will say, you know, that's what I meant to call. Well, Miami finally finishes a drive. They've had lots of opportunities in Kansas City territory. And they finally finish one off for a touchdown. Oh, uh, look at that. Dan started off a little shaky, but he has got it now. Miami has tried seven consecutive two-point conversions, and now they opt for one here off the foot of Stojanovic. The con Every few years, the world gathers to witness an unparalleled sports spectacle, the Truckathlon. Yeah! And to compete, you have to have a Ford Ranger 4x4, because you'll need a switch-on four-wheel drive for truck long jump. It's four-wheel anti-lock brakes for truck discus. And it's whopping four-liter V6 for truck hurdles. The Ford Ranger 4x4. You can't win without one. Next event, truck pole vault. Yes! On December 20th, Academy Award winner Anthony Hopkins and Academy Award winning director Oliver Stone go behind the headlines. He's completely lost touch with reality. To find a man who knew everything about power. They can't impeach me from bombing Cambodia. The president can bomb anybody he likes. Except its price. How much more is it going to cost? When did the rest of us stop paying off your debts? This is Nixon's finish. Nixon. Rated R. Celebrating. Oh, oh no, I messed up. Not me. Sinatra, 80 my... years my way, my Thursday. Way. Fly me to the moon. Let me play <laughs> the <money star. laughs> uh, The Let perfect segue. Fly me to the moon. First recorded by the great Sinatra in 1964. As the Dolphins kick off. Stojanovic with Miami leading 13 to nothing. Sends it down to the nine yard line. Van over. He's taken down up at the 37. Of course, the, uh, of course, the significance of that song was that uh, that song was recorded after Don Shula was already mm -hmm. a head coach in the National Football League. Imagine that. That's you could win a few bucks on some trivia questions along those lines, yeah. couldn't you? What was going on over the 33 years that he's been directing the fortunes of Baltimore Colts? Shula was a head coach before Sinatra recorded Fly Me to the Moon, The Way You Look Tonight, and My Kind of Town. Probably many, many more. First and 10 from the 37. In the middle of the road, Steve Hurt came up with that. Bono throws incomplete. Well, Shula again made the cover of Sports Illustrated this week. Not the happiest cover, though. They juxtaposed Pat Riley of the Miami Heat and Riley off to a great start with Don, hot and not. And Riley was incensed. I talked to Pat today. He's out on the West Coast with his team, and he said, if I'd have known what they were going to do and put it in that context, I would not have been a part of that article. The article, there were two of them. One was very complimentary toward the Heat. The other was about Shula. And Pat said, I'm embarrassed. Also said what's going on with Don Shula in South Florida is flat wrong. Second down and 10 from the 37 yard line. Allen, flag goes down. Marcus cuts it back the other way. <laughs> sort of like a Super Bowl run. 83. And Allen Whoa, goes over the Mark bench at the end of the play. Marcus goes over a table. Boy, and you get the feeling this was probably a lot of work for nothing as far as Allen's concerned. Almost certainly a penalty like this goes against the Chiefs, and it will. 
All right, that's a lot of effort and a perilous landing for Marcus Allen for nothing. Holding number 38, offense. Still second down. Kimball Anders, the fullback, draws the flag. And let's take a look at Marcus, who gets in trouble with the furniture on the sidelines. Marcus had a problem with the old brakes. He could have stopped. It looked like well before the, well before. There's the hold right there. A full-blown tackle on Trace Armstrong by Kimball Anders. Second down and 20 now at the 26 as we come upon the two-minute warning. That much time left in the first half with Miami leading Kansas City 13 to nothing. Ah, the fresh autumn air. Ah, oh, the total darkness. Where are those darn flashlights? Ow. Still works. Dependable Duracell batteries. Nothing lasts longer. We haven't used these since that blackout two years ago. Hey, where's mine? <laughs> the copper top. No battery is stronger, longer. The human face. A landscape. Difficult terrain where certain hairs grow taller, longer. Introducing a revolutionary three-stage shaving system. Braun Flex Integral. The first foil removes short hairs. An integrated cutter shaves longer hairs. And the second foil completes the job. New Flex Integral. For Braun's closest shave yet. Braun. The world's most recognized shave. They're in the shapes of little portals. And when you walk, they bark. Shopping for the holidays? Come to Wendy's for a Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich. It's a whole breast fillet, Monterey Jack, and ranch dressing with bacon. At least you'll get one thing you like this holiday. Scampi champagne. I like it. Sparkling, delicious. No champagne tastes like Bellatore. Frankly, I think it tastes better than champagne. One sip of Bellatore. One sip says it all. The beautiful Canary Islands, the site this week for Shell's wonderful world of golf. Coming your way Sunday, check your local listings for the time right here on ABC. Two minutes left in the half. John Holt, who uh, has had back problems for a long time. Right now he's on the sideline, and Jeff Criswell is taking his spot at left tackle for Kansas City. Second and 20. John, a very big man. Six foot eight, 310 pounds. That's a big hunk of humanity. Bono. And that's incomplete. Slaughter looks for the flag, and here it comes. They throw one in. Terrell Buckley with the coverage. Well, Bucky, Buckley needn't have bothered. That ball again was overthrown. But he did hit him early, and that'll get the flag every time. And there's J.B. Brown, Pass who's been hurt. Number 27, defense. First down. Buckley taking the spot of that man. Brown injured his knee and missed last week and was held out this week. There's the contact long before the ball arrives in the area. He would dearly love to put some numbers on the board before the half. First and ten from the 43-yard line. And that seemed complete. Willie Davis, the intended receiver, covered by Frankie Smith. So, Frank, we cover all the sports here on Monday Night Football. You saw Mickey Harrison, the owner of the Miami Heat. Mm -hmm. What's the story with Alonzo Mourning? In other words, it's not as bad as uh, they thought it was, a little MRI, and uh, they expect him to be out a couple of weeks, and they need him. Heat off to a good start. Florida Panthers leading their division in the National Hockey League. A lot of things happening here. Second down and 10 from the 43. Bono under pressure, throws to Marcus Allen, and he gets tackled at the 41-yard line by Marco Coleman. But just to button up on Pat Riley, he wanted to be 
very plainly stated there is no coach in all of sport that he holds in higher regard and higher esteem than Don Shula and he was embarrassed and shocked when he saw the cover of Sports Illustrated last week and the juxtaposition timeout 13 nothing Miami. How does it feel to be Steve Young? It hurts. Give me my Advil. Nothing has shown me it works better on aching muscles or lasts longer. Advil is the one. Nasty game. Advanced medicine for pain. I'm Brad Musburger in New York. Some college football news today. Terry Donahue made it official. He's stepping out as head coach at UCLA after 20 years. He'll go into the broadcasting business. He will coach the Bruins against Kansas in their bowl game. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, Peter King of Sports Illustrated is in Dallas. He'll tell us about the turmoil around the Dallas Cowboys. Also, we're going to hear from 49er linebacker Ken Norton and also from Miami Dolphin coach Don Shula. Now back to the game. Okay, Brent, third down and 12 for Kansas City as Bono slings one over the middle and oh, out in front of the intended receiver, Dane and Hughes. Well, perfect protection, a wide open receiver, and everything was going well right up to the delivery of the football, and we've documented it to this point, but painfully obvious that Steve Bono is having trouble throwing the football. Hughes. Can't even get a finger on it. No, nope. and he was wide open. Louis Aguiar to punt. Oh, Jay McDuffie back to receive it. Aguiar moving to his left to accept the snap, and McDuffie fields at the 18 as a flag down. And he runs it back to the 26 yard line with a minute and 17 left in the half. Your basic and eligible man downfield. Number 83 of the kicking team illegally downfield. The penalty is declined. Well, no team, we bring you these nuggets from time to time, that has ever lost a regular season game to the New York Jets, has ever won a Super Bowl at the end of that season. Kansas City didn't play them. What a terrible so, thing to put out. So guess which team we're talking about. Well, that'll make Jets fans happy all around yeah. America. If there are Jets fans all around America. Don Shula said that was the low point of the season that lost in the Meadowlands to the Jets. Marino throws. Kirby makes the catch. And almost lost the ball, but retains it up at the 32-yard line. Tackled by Collins and Bayless. Each team with two timeouts remaining, a minute left in the half. Not much of a sense of urgency on the part of the Dolphins. Second down and four. couldn't get it Neil Smith hits one out of the park because he created it and at the bottom of the pile I think Richmond Webb got it are the Miami Dolphins oh and uh oh uh -oh. Dan's holding his right arm his right hand oh boy Booker and Sally Mua both overplayed the ball Webb recovers the fumble somehow some way So Smith hits one out of the park as he uh, so notes at the end of the play, but it wound up off the top of the there's, wall. There's Booker and Salamua just really knocked him off the ball. Third and 14, and they give it to Kirby, and he works his way up to the 28-yard line. And Dan Marino is shaking his hand. Mm. Dan Marino leaves the field here at the end of the first half, Ooh. and he has hurt his right wrist or right hand in some way. That's the first thing we'll check out when the second half commences. Halftime 13 nothing will return after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC stations.
I faced a lot of challenges in my NFL career. With no ch Tuesday, will Tim be stuck with Al on Christmas Eve? It's your father. He's stranded in the middle of nowhere. He may not make it back tonight. All right, cool. An all-new home improvement. Then what episode could be so outrageous? I was wondering if they were going to do it, and they're doing it. That it had to have its own special time. No, I really am a woman. A new Roseanne at a later time, Tuesday after home improvement. What makes a great gift? Perry Ellis Wrinkle Resistant Dress Slacks. Perry Ellis Machine Washable Wrinkle Resistant Dress Slacks. The more you have of these, the less you need one of these. Well, that's a great gift. Thanks, Bernines. Yeah. Open up, darling. Your hunk of burning love is here. Mmm. <laughs> 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 Champagne's not Corbell. Well, I see you and it's gonna be missing out at Kevin. I'm gonna bring in love and tell you champagne's not Corbell. Well, so Corbell. For people who know champagne. What makes a great gift? That's easy. A guest watch. Their guest watch is for fashion and fun. And for the person who practically lives in the water, a guest water pro. Guest watches. Great style, great selection, and a great gift idea at Berdines. The Lexus Halftime Report. Brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles. The result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. From our New York studios, your host, Brent Musburger. Welcome, everybody. You know, this season could well be remembered as fourth and one. You've heard it. You've read about it. Barry Switzer going against the percentages in Philadelphia yesterday and failing. But the ramifications for the Dallas Cowboys are enormous. Take a look at this graphic. They have given away the home field edge to the 49ers. Since 1980, the home team has won the NFC Championship 12 of the 15 times they played. The Cowboys are one and four on the road yet today. Coach Switzer was putting on his best happy face. We can have the same record we had last year, 12 and 4. We can do the same thing. And as long as we get an opportunity to go play in the championship game, we don't care where it might be. It happens to be in Dallas, San Francisco, the desert, the cow pasture, whatever. Now, Peter King of Sports Illustrated has been in Dallas all day. Peter, I cannot imagine that it was a good scene. Brent, I've been around the Cowboys all day today and a lot this year. One thing's obvious to me. Veteran leadership of this team has lost faith in the ability of Barry Switzer to lead them. Now, yesterday's coaching blunder brought it all to a head. I talked to Jerry Jones late today, and the Dallas owner swears he won't fire Switzer. I quote, there's absolutely no possibility, absolutely none, that I will replace Barry Switzer after this season. Now, they're still 10 and 4, but there was a lot of wagons circling here today. On the blackboard of a team meeting room were these words. The only people who can save us are in this room, and that should be good enough. Brent? You know, Peter, compounding that situation is a physical condition of quarterback Troy Aikman. He simply has not been himself. Meanwhile, out in San Francisco, well, linebacker Ken Norton knows that Christmas came early for the 49ers. I tell you, uh, you, you have to understand that uh, there were one time in the season we were five and four, and everybody was kind of counting us out. Uh, now we're we're kind of sitting in the driver's seat, but uh, you have to win football games, and we know that uh, nothing uh, it looks good right now, but we have to continue winning games to make it all possible. Ken, tell me what the players are talking about with regards to the home field advantage. You had to think, hey, we got to go through Dallas again and beat those guys down there. Now look at what's happened. What's the feeling? Uh, things have changed just, uh, primarily because we've been winning games. Uh, we were uh, not doing so good early on. Now we've kind of come together as a team offensively and defensively, playing real hard, making a lot of plays, and we put ourselves in this position because we're winning games. And uh, we get kind of caught up in this home field advantage, and we kind of lose focus of what we're doing, and uh, we don't want to do that. We just have two tough games with Minnesota and Atlanta, and those teams are vying for playoff spots themselves, so we have to uh, not lose focus at all. But from now on, 49er fans will call him simply Santa Switzer. Coming up, another coach who's been under fire this season. We'll hear from Don Shula. Life rarely imitates orange cones. Orange cones, however, can be made to imitate life. Life. 
at Lexus, we've created a suspension system so advanced, it's smooth when you want it to be, unresponsive when you need it to be. The 1996 LS400. Impossible. The laws of Lexus state otherwise. ABC Sports brings in the new year with three big bowl games. First, on New Year's Eve, our party begins with football Cajun style. Texas heads to New Orleans to hook horns with the Hokies of Virginia Tech. It's the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Then on New Year's Day, top five powers meet when Tennessee battles the Ohio State Buckeyes in the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. And Southern Cal hopes to write a wicked ending to Northwestern Cinderella season. They meet in the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Three great bowl games beginning New Year's Eve on ABC. Well, at halftime, Don Schul and the Miami Dolphins lead Kansas City 13 to nothing. You know, down in South Florida, Don Shula has been under enormous fire, almost from the point where they started losing. He sat down last night with our Al Michaels. Don, you've read and heard things about yourself you've not read or heard in 33 years of coaching. What emotional toll has this taken on you, and do you think that some of the criticism has been too personal? Oh, I think so. Any time that you get personal and there is cruelty and vicious, viciousness involved, I, you know, I think that's going above and beyond. I've given this game everything that I have to give. I've given this community everything that I have to give, and I'm very, very proud of that. And uh, at the end of the year, I'll evaluate my own performance. I'll evaluate the performances of the people that are responsible to me, and then make uh, decisions based on that. Don, you have said you will evaluate yourself at the end of this season. You have one more year remaining on your contract, but as we sit here doing this interview right now, are you leaning one way or another for 1996? Not really, because as I mentioned, the toughest part that I've had is to stay focused on what my responsibilities are, and that's to get the football team ready each and every week. The minute that the people that I'm responsible for sense that, that I'm hesitant about what I'm trying to get done, and, you know, leadership is lost at that time, and you can't let that happen. Uh, my responsibility is to be positive and, and, uh, and do everything that I can to prepare the football team to play. You have now been a head coach in the NFL for more than half the years you have been on this earth. <laughs> when you stop coaching, whenever that is, and you think about not coaching, does that frighten you at all? Do you get nervous thinking about that? Not really, because uh, I've enjoyed the, the, the coaching part of it. There isn't anything I'd rather be doing, but I'm sure that when it comes time to quit, I'm going to find some things that I'm going to do and enjoy because of the sacrifices that, that I've given the coaching profession. I spoke with Dolphins owner Wayne Heisinger before the game. He said no decision has been made about 1996. And in so many words, he said, Don Shula is a very smart man. He will, in effect, make the decision whether he stays or whether he retires as the head coach and Brent we talked to Don last night I said what's the best part of coaching for you right now he said game day it's the competition Brent it's intoxicating to the man and I think he can't replace it if they go to the playoffs I think Don's back you know Al if he could pick anybody in the league as his successor and you fellows can talk about this in the second half I'm of the opinion it would be Marty Schottenheimer Second half is coming up now. It's the Dolphins and the Chiefs. The most affordable Lexus now comes with a moonroof. Six disc CD auto changer. Leather trimmed seats. And chrome wheels worthy of a Lexus. And with a savings of up to $2,000, you'll laugh all the way to the bank. The ES300 Luxury Value Package, available while they last at your Lexus dealer. The Lexus Halftime Report has been brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. We'll be back with the second half kickoff after this from our ABC stations. Tuesday, a kidnapping pits Andy against the FBI. I know what kind of technology and manpower they can bring to bear. Oh, they got massive technology. He told you we're taking over? All our cases? NYPD Blue. Viewer discretion advised. Tuesday on ABC. Wednesday, Madonna in a mood you've never seen before. Revealing, remembering, the showgirl shows up and tells you what's inside. God, I wish I had a mother that I could call. I don't. Primetime, Wednesday.
From the Eyewitness News team, these are working stories. Stories we're working on for after the game, a somber moment before tonight's Dolphins game. We'll show you what the fans did in memory of Jimmy Rice. A South Florida senator is in trouble over some of his private business dealings. If you drink brewed, hot, or iced tea, a health warning you need to hear. The whole nation saw breezy South Florida weather tonight. Wait until you see what you're missing up north. Join us on the Eyewitness News Night Beat right after the game. Zale sells more diamonds than any jeweler in the country, like this exclusive one-carat diamond baguette heart pendant for just $7.99. Why just give her your heart when you can also give her diamonds? Zales, the diamond heart pendant store. Zales, the diamond store, now has an exquisite one-carat diamond baguette bracelet for just $9.99. Diamonds like these don't just cut glass, they melt hearts. Zales, the diamond bracelet store. Our plane leaves at 5.30. And it's 5.10, not to worry. Not worry? Avis has return valet service. They'll drive us right to the terminal. Avis return valet. First at the most airports across America. Another way the employee owners of Avis are making the future safer, faster, and better. I'll be there in five minutes. I'm not worried. To the future. My name is Neil Howard. I'm an artist, and the road is my palette. I'm basically in the business of telling people where to go. Without us, people wouldn't know where to turn. When our office got to a point where our phone lines needed to be put in fast, Bell South had Ty Reynolds on board. With the help of those new lines, we got $50,000 in new contracts. Needless to say, I'm a happy man in Rashawn, Georgia. Bell South, for small business, it's all here. Keep it on 10. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Brought to you by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. The Discover card. It pays to discover. The card that pays you back. And Miller Brewing Company. Wishing you and yours a very happy holiday season. Ready to start the second half. Miami 13, Kansas City nothing. We saw Dan Marino shaking his hand ringing it out as he left the field at the end of the first half. Lynn Swan, what's the latest? Well, he came out here for the uh, second half warm-up. He was throwing the ball fine. I, I asked him about the tan. He gave me a thumbs up, said it was okay, gave me a very confident smile, and he went back to throwing the football. Uh, and so I think he'll be okay. My big concern is all the little injuries for the Kansas City Chief, Al. I mean, the first half, it was Neil Smith, Lake Dawson, John Alt. Uh, Dale Carter, all of them came out at one time or another with some kind of injury, and Marty Schottenheimer told the guys in the locker room, forget the first half, let's go out and try and put one half together, we're still in the ball game. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and take a look at that play with Marino at the end of the first half. Neil Smith coming in, and Dan's hand hits the face mask of Smith. Well, he looked in pain when he was leaving the football field, but it sounds like he's all right. And that uh, play ended up with a very alert fumble recovery by Richmond Webb that uh, kept Kansas City from having possession deep in Miami territory and in essence has kept the Chiefs off the scoreboard as they're down 13 to nothing and I think the ugliest first half they've played in a while. <laughs> Elliott sends it to the one Randall Hill up to the 22 yard line. And let's take a look at the numbers through the first. 30 minutes of play. Gary Stevens going over things with Marino before Dan comes out. Miami on top, 13 to nothing. Only 81 yards of offense for the Kansas City Chiefs in the first half. Look at Three turnovers. Of, look at the time of possession. Better than two to one favoring the Dolphins. They're just a miserable half all the way around for Kansas City. And while we're talking about all the injuries for this 11 and 2 team, I have to think that that finger of Steve Bono is one of the unreported injuries that's really affecting the Chiefs and their ability to play a good football game. From the 22-yard line, Marino drops it off underneath to Bernie Parmalee, who sprints back the other way and picks up a first down. Neil Smith then creates a fumble at the end of the play. And Miami retains possession. Oh, they were so lucky, though. Neil Smith came in blindsiding Parmalee and took a shot at the football and he got it out. Well, first it was Richmond Webb. He recovers the fumble of Dan Marino. And that time, I think the other tackle, Billy Milner, gets all the way down there. 
Smith met tremendous effort on first of all he was pressuring on the pass rush got up <clears throat> look he's down here he's been blocked out of the play gets up comes in behind Parmelin jars the ball loose but Miami recovers first down for the 34 that was Parmelin's first fumble in 12 games after he has fumbled three times in the season's first two games Dean of four here Jamison with the stop and uh, an injury timeout one of the Chiefs uh, shaken up on the 35 yard line and that is Vaughn Booker so that defensive line of Kansas City taking his lumps tonight Black and Decker presents How Would You Fix It? Hi, I'm Matt Moore, and I've played in several championship games with the Miami Dolphins. Tonight, the Dolphins are winning the battle of the takeaway. Kansas City has been the leader in the conference in takeaways. Tonight, the Dolphins are ahead, and they're running the football. They're not living and dying by Danny's arm, and they must continue to run the football. If they get over 100 yards, they'll win the game tonight. The Workmate shop box has storage space inside and a unique clamping top on the outside, so it's an easier way to set up shop. The Workmate shop box from Black & Decker. It's how things get done. Skimpy champagne. I like it. Sparkling, delicious. No champagne tastes like Balladore. Frankly, I think it tastes better than champagne. One sip of Balladore, one sip says it all. Let's look at the Magnum Power Sales event one word at a time. Magnum, as in Magnum Engines, as in Dodge Ram, ranked most appealing pickup by J.D. Power & Associates. Power, overall the most powerful line of truck engines on the planet. Sales, save up to $670. Or lease a well-equipped Ram for $269 a month. And event, it's the first time America's hottest pickups have ever been on sale like this. At America's Truck Stop, the new Dodge. Up, <laughs> well, fly me to the moon. That's right. Fly me to the moon. Oh, so that the old cliche, moon over Miami, right? Oh, no, 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 no. All right. Well, overall of Dade County. Meanwhile, Kansas City, best record in football, really struggling here tonight. Little on offense, and they more than anything, they are getting a lot of nicks. Von Booker now on the sidelines. They're looking at him. It is second down and six after that injury timeout. McDuffie goes in motion. Miami up 13 to nothing. And Bernie Parmley with a flag coming in. And from the umpire, that normally means offensive holding. Marty didn't even wait for the call. He said, we'll take it. Yep. Almost certainly affect one of the uh, Dolphins on the offensive line, if that's the case. Holding. 69 offense still second down. That's a perfect segue to one of the Dolphins offensive linemen who was honored here at halftime today. Bob Kuchenberg former all pro multiple times for the Dolphins and a member of that undefeated football team joins their ring of honor around Joe Robbie Stadium here. 190 games now yeah. played over 15 years. Now that's Al on one side of that banner Frank on the other as they <laughs> unveil. Cooch, yep. one of the most uh, popular Dolphin players of all time. Ooh, Neil Smith right there, Bernie Parmalee. <laughs> well, somebody's got to try to fire the Chiefs up. They, let's face it, they've been sleepwalking, and they've been acting like that 11-2 record was going to knock the Dolphins off the ball, and it was going to tackle people, and it was going to throw the football. That's a good job of Neil Smith, keeping the shoulder pads parallel to the ground playing off the block and then going upfield to make the play. Of course, if you were not with us earlier, Derek Thomas, their all-pro linebacker, not playing tonight, not even in uniform. He has a slightly pulled groin, and they don't want to aggravate that. They just don't give you the impression of a football team that's playing with a lot of emotion. Now, third down and 18 with McDuffie in motion. Kansas City rushes only three, and that's enough to flush Marino out of the pocket. He gets it to Fryer, but Irving's about five yards short of the first down. Sally Amula putting the pressure on at the end of the play. 
So it's fourth down. The Kansas City Chiefs, 11 and 2. Derek Thomas not in uniform tonight with that groin pull. They'll go home to end the season against Denver and Seattle. They're a team with only two losses, one at Cleveland in the fourth game of the year, the other at Dallas on Thanksgiving Day. John Kidd to kick. Dane and Hughes is back to receive it. Hughes at the 17 yard line and gets no blocking and no help at all. And he's tackled at that spot by. Sean Hill, Miami leading 13 to nothing early in the third. you and yours a very happy holiday season. This holiday season, the only action in town is on the ice. Jean-Claude Van Damme, Sudden Death, Rated R, starts Friday, December 22nd. Yourself. With Yield's lenses and the Rebel X from Canon. If you have what's overall the most powerful line of truck engines on the planet, if you have better resale value than Ford, Chevy, or GMC, if you have what it takes to get J.D. Power & Associates' most appealing pickup award, you're probably not going to put your trucks on sale. But then, if you're Dodge, you like to change the rules. Announcing the first ever Magnum Power Sales Event with savings up to $670 and low lease rates on America's hottest pickups. At America's Truck Stop, the new Dodge. Wednesday, it's Drew's dad. You can write a, a book about this kid. <laughs> or at least a company newsletter. I'll be right back. I want to grab a pen. Why don't you just tell her how I used to walk around the house in high heels? <laughs> a new Drew, Wednesday. Tomorrow night on ABC Coach and Roseanne Trade Places. Coach uh, starts it off at 8 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, a special time. Then Hudson Street Home Improvement, Roseanne in Coach's spot and NYPD Blue. Boys, that's, that's still not our episode of Coach mm -hmm. tomorrow night. You think they might have scrubbed it. Uh, well, I think they're doing some major editing. We were pretty bad. America wants to know when we're going to be on. So do we. Keep those residuals coming in. From the 17-yard line, Kimball Anders breaks it. Down the sideline he goes, and Kimball Anders is being chased down by Stewart and finally shoved out of bounds, but they're going to say he first stepped out at the 39-yard line of the Dolphins. Well, Kimball Anders is quietly having a superb year for Kansas City. He's turned into the complete football player, came up as a free agent out of Houston in 91, and he is one of the fine blocking backs in the league, a good receiver. That's the longest run of his career. 44 yards for Kimball Anders. A very timely one. They needed something to spark them. Good break to the inside. Leaving Will Shields, but he did it the right way. Bono at the 39. And Marcus Allen, ooh, does he get popped. Somehow Slaughter winds up with the ball. What a bizarre looking play. Allen goes down, Slaughter gets the ball, and Brian Cox, who's been pretty quiet tonight, haven't called his name much, uh, right in the middle of the action. Terrell Buckley was the guy who hit Marcus. A lot of time for Bono. He just kind of eased out of the pocket. Just good coverage downfield. He had no place to put it. Dumped it off to Marcus, and Marcus, I'm sure, went back. Don't ever do that to me again. And somehow Webster Slaughter alertly comes up with the ball on the sideline. Second and eight. Fake to Allen. Bono throws. Marcus makes the catch. Holds on to it at the 28-yard line. And by stretching out, picks up the first down. It's not been a big year for receptions for Marcus, but they have been key receptions when he's made them. Works well out of the backfield. Kept himself alive there and gets the first down. Well, as Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator, directs this drive from upstairs. This, this is a drive where Kansas City desperately needs to finish it off. They need to get some points. Crawl back in this football game. Ten and a half minutes left in the third. From the 28-yard line. Allen behind Anders. Good block by Kimball to Springham. 
And Marcus is out of bounds at the 14-yard line. A run out by Lewis Oliver. Boy, how's that for some dynamic blocking at the point of attack? Putting the Dolphins on the ground. Will Shields, number 68, he gets his guy. Kimball Anders, the fullback, gets his. And John Alt comes back and finishes off Brian Cox. Three beautiful blocks at the point of attack for Kansas City. Marcus Allen, 15 yards on the play. Seven carries tonight for 55 yards. Marcus again to the eight-yard line. Brian Cox makes the tackle. Marcus last week, big day in Oakland. He became the first player in the history of the National Football League to accumulate 10,000 yards rushing to go along with 5,000 yards receiving. And he's already said if he goes into the Hall of Fame, and clearly he will, he's going in as a chief, not a Raider. They might scrub the uh, five-year waiting rule for Marcus Allen. They might as well. Second and four from the eight. Allen again. And he's a little short of the first down, setting up a third and one. Of course, every time Marcus gets near the goal line, he is the man the Kansas City Chiefs love to go to, and for very, very good reason. It's because of the tremendous success he's had getting the ball into the end zone. You see Marcus Allen in third place, one more touchdown. He ties the immortal Jim Brown for all-time second place behind Jerry Rice, who, of course, continues to add to his lead on a weekly basis. Third down and one, Danelle Bennett comes in as the blocking back. Allen is the tailback. Here goes Marcus, and he has enough for the first down, I believe. The Dolphins are going to argue that point, but it appears he stretched out. Johnny Greer will bring the change in. Every time we start comparing records, you, know, you almost have to, when you talk about Jim Brown, let's point out that he played nine years. Mm -hmm. Marcus is in his 14th. Jim Brown seasons were 14 game seasons. Uh, just truly the most remarkable running back that I've ever watched play this game. Well, that's that's why I use the term immortal. Yeah. You don't uh, you don't put that tag on very many people. And Jim Brown, one of the very few. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> just a, that much short. Well, choices for Kansas City. I think uh, you've got to go for it. Now, a play fake to Marcus and a pass to the secret weapon, Joe Valerio. <laughs> Always an option. Yeah, Valerio will be uh, an eligible receiver. There he is lining up on the outside. And they give it to Marcus, and Marcus Ooh. gets taken Ooh. down at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got it. That was a good play no. by the Dolphins. Dolphins are saying no. And the defense has been ridiculed over the past few weeks. We now is no, hearing the chant defense. We've had no indication yet. Mark is upset over the spot. That's not a good sign for Kansas City. No. Marcus said that's not where they stopped me. Uh, running backs have a, a sense about where their progress was stopped. Yeah. Well, uh, Marcus did not get much in the it. way of headway. Ooh. Short. Well, Miami may have saved its season with a great stand last week against Atlanta, giving them the ball back. And they just duplicated the feed here with 8.18 to go in the third. 13 0 Miami. Over the past three years, Dodge has offered a choice of more new nameplates than anybody else. Here are three more new choices, but they aren't cars. They are three choices that make it easier for you to drive a new Dodge. Choose from generous cash incentives or exceptional interest rates or extremely low lease rates. The Dodge Buyer's Choice Sale. Why would you choose to buy any place else? As the official airline of the 1996 Olympic Games, Delta is setting the pace for business travelers with an event of its own, the Around the World Relay. It's a team event, 
coordinating thousands of flights a day to cities throughout the world. So you can go from one plane to another, one place to another, in record time. Delta Airlines. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs going for it on fourth down and less than one and stopped by the Miami defense. Boy, and it's tough to single out any one of the Dolphins. There were about four or five that put a shoulder pad on Marcus Allen. Mm -hmm. Including Troy Vincent, who came knifing in from the secondary. Flag comes in. Bernie Parmalee takes it up to the nine-yard line. Push him back halfway to the goal line and back to the two yard line will go. Holding 61 offense still first down. That's Tim Ruddy the center and boy does this guy really come on just a second year guy from Notre Dame and Don Shula can't say enough nice things about Ruddy. There he is in the middle of your screen, 61. You know, that's just locked up with a nose tackle. It's, it's tough to tell whether that's holding or not. Kirby trying to give them some breathing room. And this is, this is the part of the field, guys, that as an offensive lineman, I can tell you. Terrorize. <laughs> oh, yeah, because now you're looking at having to, uh, you know, having the possibility of throwing the football, and which means you're going to have to pass protect back in your own end zone. And talk about keeping those hands on your chest. Holding in the end zone is a safety. And quite embarrassing. Did you ever? No. No, 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 no. Didn't even think about it. Second and 11, and the catch is not made by McDuffie. Simeon all over him at the five yard line. This is the place where also Dan Marino is going to be very careful. He does not get it picked off. He will take little or no chance down here. Neil Smith now commanding at, at least double coverage on this play. They've been handling him with a lot of single blocking with Billy Milner doing a fine job against him. They're not going to keep him out of the face of your quarterback all night long. No, and I wouldn't ask my rookie to do it one on one uh, not at this position on the field Neil with that designer nose band third down and 11 <laughs> and all kinds of entanglement and flags and the whole thing Randall Hill and Darren Anderson and well, Marty saying Darren had every right to do what he was doing well Hill was fighting back inside a and driving against Anderson to get back at the ball. And they're going to rule it against Aaron Anderson. Hill on a fly. Breaking it back. This is the play they work on. It's a timing pattern. Pass interference. Number 44. Defense. First down. Randall Hill taking it up for a first down mark. Marino throwing it to the inside and Randall Hill fighting back, trying to fight back through Darren Anderson, and Anderson got the arms up there and gets the flag. It, it, the body position wouldn't have drawn the flag. I think you're right, Frank. The hands on the shoulder pads are what brought the flag. Take to Kirby. Marino on a reverse roll, and the catch is made by Irving Fryer at the 37 and a first down. Needless to say, Marty uh, more than just a tad upset at drawing that call but again the body position I don't think would have brought the flag it's it's getting the arms up on the shoulder pads and giving the appearance that you're fronting him and keeping him away with your hands and Anderson really almost yeah. trying to get away from him himself but the hands were there Bernie Parley having his right ankle worked on and wrapped so the ace running back shelved for the moment Kirby in the backfield Kirby gets the football and Kirby takes it up to the 41 yard line. Brian Washington makes the tackle. So they work on Parmalee and the way he responds to the fact that he knows he's on camera is that uh, it's nothing real serious and they're saying it's a sprained right ankle. Wasn't Bernie the guy that used to work for UPS? Yes sir. So that's a, <laughs> 868 yards rushing last year. 
On his Another way fine again. year. This year, it's uh, that must seem like a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Got us in there now. Kirby came back from a very serious knee injury in the fourth game of a year ago, and he's just about 100% once again. And Kirby takes it up to the 44-yard line. Terry Kirby. Brother Wayne plays with the Cleveland Indians as you look down upon Joe Robbie Stadium from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes moored in Pompano Beach. And we are in just about the only warm place in America, aren't we? Well, in Southern California. Yeah. Yep. And Arizona. But to up north, uh, we don't have to tell you what's been going on. Buffalo with the three feet of snow. And that's where Miami will be on Sunday against the Bills. They can get in. Yeah, third. <laughs> and that's broken up. Fryer, the intended receiver. Fourth down. Marino muttering as he comes off the field. Well, a little crossing pattern. It was performed well. There's a little pick play developed with the crossing pattern and the ball in there. And again, this is one you got to say that. Fire very easily could have handled, should have handled, and just dropped it. Irving has struggled with the football over the last couple of weeks. Uncharacteristically. Kid kicks, fair catch, called for, and accepted at the 23-yard line by Dean and Hughes. Chiefs and Bono. Dodge's new family value caravan comes with anti-lock brakes, 146 cubic feet of cargo room, nine cup holders, nine nooks, crannies, compartments, and cubby holes. There's even a money holder, which is nice, because when you buy this caravan, you should end up with some change. The new Dodge Caravan. This year, Motor Trend's Car of the Year isn't a car, it's the new Dodge Caravan. This holiday season, don't let a fortune pass you by. The Discover Card Big Payback is back. Awarding eight winners a quarter of a million dollars each. Just shop with your Discover card and you're automatically entered in our holiday sweepstakes. The more you do, the more chances you have to win. Who would want to miss that? It pays to Discover, the card with the big payback. Use it where you see the Novus sign. To apply for your Discover card, just call 1-800-DISCOVER. Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul reminds us that it's better to give than to receive, especially when you're giving the gift of Ice House. That's because Ice House is ice brewed, so there's never any watered down taste, just more of what you want in a holiday. And not only does Ice House come pre-wrapped in bright holiday-like packaging, but it's the kind of gift that usually gets shared with the giver. Thanks, and enjoy the season. What episode could be so outrageous? I was wondering if they were going to do it, and they're doing it. You have to have its own special time. No, I really am a woman. Roseanne, Tuesday at 9.30, 8.30 Central. Brian Cox tonight has been limited to two tackles. Quiet night for a man who's anything but quiet. But they are pitching a shutout. Yep. In a game that's real, that's vital for Miami. It's their final home game of the year. They control their own fate in terms of getting into the playoffs. And they end on the road at Buffalo and at St. Louis. First and 10, Kansas City from the 23-yard line. As Steve Bono surveys the field and guns one up to the 35-yard line, taken in there by Keith Cash. Before the game and tonight, they were celebrating Mark Bonacani night here fans asked to contribute to the Miami project of course the love of Nick Bonacani the former all pro and very popular Dolphin here in Miami played on the, the Miami Super Bowl Jones team the following, but who helped make it was 10 years ago the mark was paralyzed in a football accident and his father has dedicated himself to the Miami project to fight paralysis to trying to find a cure for paralysis they've done a wonderful job They're fantastic raising millions of dollars through the years it's Marcus Allen takes it up to the 40-yard line. Chris Singleton making the tackle. Big okay, plans now. Excuse me, Dan. Big plans now for a new $30 million facility here at the University of Miami. And what they're doing tonight is uh, asking for the fans entering the stadium tonight to make a donation on their way in. They were hoping to raise uh, up to $100,000, and of course Nick Bonacani rightfully 
on the Dolphin Ring of Honor here, Joe Robbie. Great family story. Nick and Mark's mother, Terry, they dedicated their lives to finding a cure for paralysis. Second and five. Mono incomplete. Webster Slaughter reaching for it with one hand, but can't hold it in. No, but I think that's a part of the field that the Kansas City Chiefs have to challenge. They've been dinking and dunking all night and uh, trying something down the middle, going over the top. This is a team that try, has to try to make something happen. Slaughter has the step on Buckley. The ball just uh, a shade overthrown, or else they've got the big play they're looking for. And Dan, you're right. That's the play should challenge it, too. J.B. Brown out of the game. Terrell Buckley making a start, second start. And that's where they should be trying to get the completions. Third and five. Bono has dinked and dunked. Seven of 19 for a measly 58 yards. And that's incomplete. And a marker does come in. I think it's across the field on Troy Vincent against Lake Dawson. They threw it right at, they were all tangled up, and they threw it right at their feet. Back judge making the call. Johnny Greer is asking, was it after the ball was thrown? Lewis Richard is the back judge. Illegal contact, number 23, defense. First down. And as Troy Bets a clear across the side of the other side of the field, away from the action. And he was working against Lake Dawson in what appeared to be man coverage. There he is. 23 is Troy Benson. Here comes Lake Dawson. And beyond those five yards, you got to keep those hands off him. <laughs> I'd say that that was I'm illegal sure. contact. About 20 yards worth. First down, Kansas City from the 46. Good fake to Marcus. Go! deep at the coverage is beautiful it's too good in fact because Oliver and Vincent were both there and neither could pick it off boy does Bono take a shot in the knees from Marco Coleman comes in on the pass rush and Steve is hit very awkwardly and he's very fortunate that that he's not injured Coleman with the pressure that time up the middle He's crawling on his way trying to get to Steve Bono. And oh, he is so fortunate. Boy, a lot of times you'll see the guy comes out of that with a hyperextended knee. <laughs> well, Slaughter had fallen down at the end of the pattern, and the Dolphins run into each other trying for the pick. And Marcus Allen swings to the outside, and Hollier takes him down. It'll be third and nine with 3.20 to go, third quarter, and Miami leading 13-0. Do you think Tom Olivadotti's license plate has the words much maligned in front of his name? <laughs> well, when you talk to other coaches around the National Football League, they'll tell you that's certainly the case. Yep. Tom Olivadotti used to coach for Marty Schottenheimer before he came to the Dolphins when Marty was in Cleveland. Marty, and talk to him, he has nothing but respect for Tom Olivadotti. And he's held that spot longer than any defensive coordinator in the league. Third down and nine from the 46. Mono throws and it's incomplete. Gene Atkins breaking the late it up flag. and a flag comes in. Derek Walker, the intended receiver. Well, that really came in late. Atkins may have been early and the flag was very late. Pass interference. 29 is Frankie Smith. It was Atkins making the contact, I believe. Yeah. Just called the wrong number. I think we can add extremely angry to Olivadotti's license plate. Yep. And the crowd responds because they just showed it up on the big screen. Bono again, just a little late getting in there. Again, the ball not with a tight spiral. We're very close. Mm -hmm. From the 36-yard line, Greg Hill picks up the yard to the 35-yard line. Second to nine. Hill, of course, spelling Marcus Allen, and uh, Greg Hill has had 
Now in his second year, first round pick a year ago out of Texas A&M, is over 500 yards rushing this year. He's seen much more action. And they're trying to get it almost 50-50 between Hill and Allen. Let's take a look at that hit again. I think it's a good call. Boy, it's, uh, he was there just a little before the ball. Second and nine from the 35-yard line. Bono caught by Walker. And he takes it to the 15, so the penalty's keeping this drive alive in Kansas City trying to make it pay off, and now yeah. penalties will stymie the drive, holding Chiefs. Well, I'm sure Don Schuler's going, it's about time when one went the other way. Two calls against my team kept this drive alive. And one of the offensive linemen, I'm assuming, got real lucky in that Johnny Greer's microphone went dead. <laughs> Second long, good time to blitz. Dolphins don't do that much of it. They like to bring Cox in a situation like this. Number 51. Second down and 19 now from the 45. And Allen gets dragged down by Jeff Cross, number 91. Officially, that hold was on Jeff Criswell. Well, boys, I'll be happy to welcome you to California next week as we do our first uh, game from San Francisco this season. The 49ers and the Vikings, after a Monday night schedule heavily weighted toward the east. In fact, the only person with more frequent flyer miles than me this year is Hazel O'Leary. <laughs> oh, Al. Wow. Third down and third. I'd love getting mail. Third and 13. And get it, you shall. <laughs> Bono throws, catch is made. Keith Cash to the 28-yard line, and they're going to give him a pretty good spot closer to the uh, 27. What kind of a spot is that? Well, I'll tell you, he really sacrificed his body looking for the first down marker. Did a spin, a very dangerous type of spin over the defender. He's complaining he didn't get enough out of it. You know, the determining factor here is whether or not he's down by contact. Was he now touched let's see. there? He might not have been touched See, if there. he was touched, he's down there. It's if Troy he's not Vincent. touched, he's not down until there. It's Troy Vincent coming under him. They're saying that he was yeah. not touched by Troy Vincent, and he might not have yeah. been. He did a, a 360 over Troy yeah. Vincent, just, as I said, sacrificing the body in the attempt for the first down. And he had the presence of mind yeah. to keep going, to yeah. keep rolling along and crawling along until somebody in a Miami uniform hits him. Good That's call a, by the official. We, uh, we take back our, right. our exclamation. And a, fine, and a fine piece of work by Cash. Wonderful effort going for the first down. Well, short again. Chiefs failed on a fourth down down at the Miami goal line with a Marcus Allen shot off right guard. Let's see what they try this time. Well that wouldn't be a bad time for your play action Dan. This is a big play for Kansas City. Yep. Joe Valerio again is an eligible receiver. Donnell Bennett's the fullback. They send Marcus in motion. They give it to Bennett and they oh. stop him. Oh. Tim Bowen's the first in there. I gets Tim Bowen's all by himself, isn't it? He gets the penetration and he's around the feet. Brian Cox doing a little karaoke on the way over to the Dolphins bench. There seems to be a lot of milling and mooing out there about where this ball is going to be spotted, but I don't see any way that yeah. Kansas City comes up with a first down. Do you? Oh, he was hit well beyond behind the line of scrimmage. Then it's been hurt. That was his boy. first carry of the season. What, what a, a play by Bowen. Oh, boy. He is, he is all the way into the Kansas City backfield. They'll measure to make it official. Well, this would be one of the 
great spots of all time Ooh, if he yeah. got the first down. Yeah, no, not even close. And they would overrun their position, these <laughs> Dolphin fans. That was so obvious. To superb play by Bowens. Brian Helmet loves to throw helmets. His or anybody else's. <laughs> we have helmets crashing all over the joint on Monday Night Football. Tomorrow, I don't him a bill. Players Magazine, a letter to Santa. And uh, Santa, don't screw it up. Get the right one. Only $2.99. day and age, the old camcorder with its tunnel vision is, shall we say, history. Now look at the world with a sharp view cam. The big bright color view screen frees you to see all the action, and the pivoting lens gets shots the old camcorders can. There's even instant replay with color and sound. So it's out with the old cam, in with sharp view cam. Now get up to a $200 rebate when you buy a sharp view cam. Ryan Cox over on the Dolphins sideline. Having went a quiet to night. Went to commercial with him smashing a Kansas City helmet. I'm wondering, wondering if someone in that pileup surrendered it voluntarily or if he forcibly removed it. Keith Byers in the backfield. Uh, some interesting numbers in his career as illustrated there. He's blocking for Parmalee who gets taken down by Ryan Washington. In fact, uh, Byers is a member of a pretty exclusive club. Nobody can enter this uh, door who uh, has less than 23 rushing TDs, 23 receiving TDs, six passing TDs, and the velvet rope comes up. There's Mr. Byers, and he opens up the door. There's only one other guy in that club. <laughs> Frank, you're adorable. Well, put him up there. They were good numbers. <laughs> <laughs> that all you got on that graphic? Yep. Were you behind door number one, door number two, or door number three? <laughs> and again, if you wonder why Disney spent 19 billion for us, 18 billion was with that animation department. End of the third quarter, 13 nothing Miami. Monday Night Football back after this from our ABC stations. Toy Story's got nothing on us. <laughs> Thursday, danger comes in many faces as the commish investigates a high-profile murder case taking Tony to the edge. Let me help you. Brace yourself for an all-new commish. Then it's a special tribute to Frank Sinatra with one-of-a-kind performances from the biggest stars, Bruce Springsteen, Roseanne, Hootie and the Blowfish, Tony Bennett, and more. It's an unforgettable celebration. Sinatra 80 years my way after the commish Thursday on ABC. A team of South Florida runners was disqualified after competing in athletic briefs. Were their shorts too short? More on the controversy tonight on Eyewitness News right after the game. Uh-oh, I still have to get gifts for Uncle Bob. The holidays, it's a wonderful time to lose your mind and go broke. But holiday shopping is easy at Office Max. Hey, it's the Office Products and Christmas Gifts Superstore. There's loads of great stuff, including quality brand names like Panasonic or Avenues in Leather at guaranteed low prices that will make you quite, you know, joyous. So, shop at Office Max this holiday and save time, money, and very possibly your sanity. Office Max, we go to the max for you. Safety, style, comfort. That's what makes Ford minivan so popular. And right now, at your South Florida Ford dealer, you can lease a Ford Windstar for only $2.79 a month for 24 months. Or buy any Ford Aerostar and get $1,500 cash back. Choose your favorite Ford minivan and get all these comfort and safety features. Great deals on great products. That's what makes Ford the leader year after year after year.
Well, told you about Keith Byers, and there are uh, the Giffers. Career mm. totals in rushing, receiving, and touchdown passes. Look at that pose, Frank. Exactly. You left out my field goals, my yeah. interception yeah. returns, and... <laughs> I'll bring him in next week. <laughs> a Hall of Fame career. That's a sherry and a sack pose if I've ever seen one. From the 34-yard line, second down and three. And Bernie Parmalee takes it up to the 36 as we begin the fourth quarter. 13 to nothing. Miami in the Dolphins' final home game of the season. Don Shula wrapping up his 26th season as the head coach here. Seven others as the head coach as of the Baltimore Colts at the age of 65 and we've talked about it throughout the game it's been the primary topic of conversation in South Florida for weeks with her done third and one from the 37 yard line and plunging Bernie Parmalee stopped by Smith and close to a first down I tell you, somebody, nobody really breathing easily on that Dolphin bench either because Kansas City has not been winning in a very pretty fashion throughout the entire season. Three of their games have been won in overtime. They have won on a, as we know, in our San Diego game on Monday night they, with an 86-yard punt return, and uh, they've won on getting fumbles in the fourth quarter, and uh, they're a scrambling, hustling team. And you just, you know, you're not safe for 13 points. First down throws into a lot of traffic, trying to jam it into Gary Clark. And James Hasty, the ex Jet, was there to break it up. Irving Fryer throwing a fit about 30 yards down the field, feeling that he was uh, so wide open that uh, the ball should have come his way. Hello, uh, Gary Clark in traffic, the ball a little bit behind him. Outstanding coverage by Hasty. That's a, a risky pass for Dan trying to force that into that much traffic. Well, they hit the jackpot with a couple of Jets, Hasty and Brian Washington moved into starters, and they've been good ones all season for Kansas City. On second and ten, Marino has time, and Gary Clark got open at the very end, but the pass underthrown. Third down and ten. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by IBM Solutions for a Small Planet. The employee owners of Trans World Airlines were up to something good. Sharp Electronics Corporation from Sharp Minds come Sharp Products and Pennzoil, the motor oil that works like liquid ball bearings. <laughs> Derek Thomas on the sidelines. Neil Smith having to work for his paycheck tonight, along with his. Kansas City defensive mates trying to hold the Dolphins to this 13 point edge. Third down 10. Marino throws off his back foot and nobody's home. Fourth and 10. Well, the defense is doing their part. They're going to get the ball back for their offensive team, which has done just about a sum total of nothing tonight. I don't know. Is this cup half full or half empty? Yeah. Is this a tremendous effort by Tom Olivadotti's defensive team, or is this just a, a miserable performance by Kansas City's offense? Probably a little bit of both right now in a game that clearly is more important to Miami, but we can't overlook what we talked about at the very top, the acquiring of home field advantage through the playoffs by Kansas City. Good kick by Kidd, fielded by Hughes, and he's tackled at the 11-yard line. Sean Hill leading the charge. 52-yard punt. 13-14 left in the fourth. 13-0 Dolphins. No one can save you now. Hey, bet we could. Fools, we will defeat you and take your Miller Lite. Not if we choose the weapon. Paper football, very clever. You kick off. <laughs> It's good. We are safe. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. You are worthy opponents. Let us celebrate. I know a good sports bar around the corner. Life is good. <laughs> so, I suppose you'll be having big sweet up in the spare room for the limbs next. Oh, uh, this little fella, I won't have to call the creamy yarn. Traveling about the street, folks. Can I play CDs? Prince, and that's without going within a bush or the hole in the wall. Me for since you must have been the door and dead. And when the video capture capability make a cat pass. It's another picture. 
That's me setting her set down to fight you with. Italians do not live by pasta alone. So to celebrate their many loves, the Olive Garden created a combination of the best of Italy. The Tuscan Feast, just $11.95 for a short time. Experience garlic shrimp, the way it's prepared along the Mediterranean. Chicken and spinach manicotti, together with a sirloin steak grilled Tuscan style. With free soup or salad and breadsticks, the Tuscan Feast, just $11.95. So much to celebrate, so much to love. Only at the Olive Garden. Wednesday, Ellen's world's turned upside down. Ellen, where do you want this one? Can her friends put it back together? Ellen, what about this one? On Ellen Wednesday here on ABC. That's your primetime lineup Wednesday, beginning with Ellen and the Drew Carey Show. Grace Under Fire, The Naked Truth, and Primetime Live coming your way Wednesday night right here on ABC. 13-14 left in regulation. Kansas City has it at its 12-yard line. Miami leading 13 to nothing. Mono going deep, and Webster Slaughter catches the wobbly pass up near midfield, taken down at the 46-yard line. So Bono unleashes one, and the Chiefs out near midfield. And again, it was Buckley who was victimized. They've been trying to go there. That ball is not pretty, but it got there. Again. Let's take a look at Slaughter. Just a straight sprint. And he got by Buckley. And Bonham was able to get it in there. And I wouldn't stop now. They've been trying to go deep. First time they succeeded, I wouldn't give up on it. From the 46, Bono. And that's through the hands of Cash. Well, gents, the NFL went to this playoff setup in, in 1990 with two wild card games we talk about home field advantage of the 40 teams that have played first round games from 1990 on only one has gone to the Super Bowl and only two have gone to the conference championship game so people say you know you can make too much at a home field advantage no. sometimes you can't no and uh, another key thing is playing well in the month of December you like to go into the playoffs on a roll with confidence I'm not sure this is a confidence inspiring game for the Chiefs tonight Coleman came in unabated and lost the whistle. Ball start. 89. Far to the snap. Still second down. But it came in unabated because Keith Cash provoked it. Good play by uh, Marco Coleman, too. And Cash makes the move, the tight end. And Coleman responded. Take a look. Watch number 89. Top of your screen. Mm -hmm. Marco Coleman yeah. from the stand-up position saw that. I think, Bono, I think Bono scared both of them. Second and 15, and that's incomplete. Intended for Webster Slaughter. I don't blame you, Webster. That would have really hurt. Third down. A little short arms there. And that, you know, Bono, I don't... He should admit that he's got a problem. <laughs> just throwing the ball this way. By the way, to wrap up that situation with first-round games, the only team to play a first-round game since 1990 and get to the Super Bowl was the Buffalo Bills in 92. That's the year they had that spectacular comeback against Houston and wound up beating Miami in the AFC Championship game. Third down and 15. And that's incomplete, intended for Willie Davis. Well, that's where if you're looking for the half-full or half-empty cup, as far as the Miami defense, it's full. That's just outstanding coverage. Good work by this Miami defensive team. Good pressure, and Michael Stewart almost came up with an INT. They had a guy below. They had a guy behind. That's just good coverage. That's just outstanding work by the Dolphins in their secondary. Michael Stewart gets a hand on the football. Just that's, that's picture perfect over the top and underneath cover. Louis Aguiar, bad kick, bounces at the 29. <laughs> and <laughs> kick, good yeah, bounce. Yeah. <laughs> and rolls another 13 yards to the 16. Louis says, that ain't bad, 44 yards. That's about my average. And the book doesn't say how it got there. Yeah. 13 nothing Miami. Oil 
Performax 100 synthetic. Today for Eastern ABC Sports, Michelle Kwan, Scott Hamilton, and others skating for your enjoyment on the United States Postal Service Skating Challenge. Right here on ABC. Dolphins at the 16. They lead 13 nothing. First and 10 with 12:21 to go in the fourth. Parmley picks up a hard yard. You know, guys, uh, we are a pretty not tightly knit team here, and I think we'd be a little remiss if we didn't wish our producers like Patty Wolf all the very best. He, she is at any moment now going to present Kenny with a brand new little baby girl. Hopefully that moment yes. will wait at least about uh, 14 more hours. Yes. It's, it's the drawing home. nigh, from what I understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Patty's in the uh, early stages of labor, so mm -hmm. Patty, uh, just relax. He's yeah. on his way, babe. Yep. Deep breathing. Calm down. Wait till about noon tomorrow, then right. go to work. Yep. <laughs> Second down and nine. And Parmalee takes it up to, <laughs> to Dan. Come on, what a way to put it. <laughs> wow. Just, just wait to work. work. <laughs> oh, maybe 2.30 or 3. <laughs> a true labor of love. Yes. Right. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Uh, of course, it's their first, and uh, they're, we're all nervous. We're all sweating this yeah. out, Patty. We're... Third down and two for Miami from the 24-yard line. What are we, the three godfathers up here? That's right. Better be. Three men and a baby. This is O.J. McDuffie to the 30-yard line, and that's a first down. Dale Carter makes the tackle. Well, we reiterate what we said earlier in the game that O.J. McDuffie has been such an asset to this offensive unit. He makes the big plays for them, the ones they have got to have. Dolphins trying to go eight and six. Again, if Miami wins all of its games, they're in the playoffs. No matter what anybody else does, they still have a chance to win the Eastern Division title as well. Indianapolis would have to lose, would they not? Right. Among other things, Ooh. Green gets taken down. There are only, you know, three teams that have made the playoffs right now in the National Football League. Kansas City, Pittsburgh, and Dallas. That's it. It was reported in some quarters yesterday and today the Bills had clinched the playoff spot. They have not. It's been reported in some quarters the Packers have clinched the playoff spot. They have not. It was also reported the 49ers have clinched the playoff spot. They have not. Apart from that, all the information you've heard today and yesterday was right. Yeah, only three teams are in. I can only assume it was reported in the hind quarters. Well, <laughs> a very poignant thing that you just saw Dan Marina do to Bernie Parmalee. Parmalee made a mistake. He patted him on the back. Screamed at him first. Parmalee up to the 30. I know one thing, Dan. Those quarters weren't worth two bits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you worked all day on that one. Oh, no, that's not, a problem. Not really. with, that's the problem with these nine o'clock starts. You have all day to think <laughs> of this. <that. laughs> Try to stay up. You, would, you wouldn't be nearly as mean if we had a noon <laughs> kickoff. That's right. <laughs> wouldn't be up. <laughs> Third and seven at the 32. Marino 17 of 32. His next pass will break Tarkenton's record for pass attempts. And here it is, barring a penalty. Oh, wow. And it is incomplete. They look around for a flag. Randall Hill puts his hands on his hips, but nothing is forthcoming. And Darren Anderson breaks it up. So Dan Marino with that pass is now the record holder in pass attempts to I go mean, with completions, yardage, and touchdown you know, passes. I don't think there's ever been a year that I've seen so many drops on the part of the Miami Dolphins. Uh, that one by Randall Hill hit him right on the numbers. Lost on it, of course, is the fact that he's the new record holder for attempts, but that pass should have been caught. Van over, back in the game to return this kick. Kid booms one. It's a beauty. 18-yard line for the rookie who played at Florida State. He gets gang tackled up at the 26. A 50-yard boot, 7-yard return. 8.33 left in regulation. 13-0 Dolphins. Skimpy champagne. I like it. Sparkling, delicious. No champagne tastes like Bellatore. 
frankly, I think it tastes better than champagne. One sip of Valatore, one sip says it all. Kevin, now you can. Print this, print that. Make a set, make a thousand. Print them in color. Fax this now, fax this later. File this, scan that. As your document processing needs grow more complex, the answer is simple. Canon has the systems that are the solution. Canon, now you can. What are you sending? It's for Carlos. In California? It's a book about maturity. You can't buy a book about maturity. AT&T True Reach Savings saves you 25% on all kinds of U.S. calls on your AT&T phone bill when you spend just $25 a month. Even 2,000 miles away, Jimmy. Privacy? I'm going to call you day and night. Every hour. Every hour? True Reach Savings. That's your true choice. AT&T. When you're rushing in a hurry, what's for dinner? Not to worry. For a warm and hearty supper, grab some chunky from the cupboard. Beef and vegetables galore, chunky soup. Meet we say more. Campbell's Chunky Soup. It eats like a meal. In this town, they speak Spanish. This one, Vietnamese. What's the problem? Why can't everyone speak English? What's going on? Watch 2020, Friday. How rare are shutouts in the NFL? There have been two this season. Dallas beat the Giants 35 zip on opening night. Denver beat Oakland 27 0 in the middle of October. Where did you see those games, folks? Right here on Monday Night Football. Tonight's score 13 0 Miami. We're on top of it. Yes. Some guys have all the luck. <laughs> Cutting edge. <laughs> First down, Kansas City at the 25 yard line. Eight and a half minutes to go. Miami leading 13 to nothing. Bono pursued by Coleman and is lucky it wasn't picked off by Dwight Hollier. Boy, the Dolphins had a blown coverage out there. They were in a mess. Yes, uh, they were. They had Chris Singleton, number 55, trying to run with Webster Slaughter. He wasn't able to do it, and, and they just weren't able to get there. It was to the near side of the field here. They're all yelling and screaming before the snap of the ball. And they were yelling and screaming at each other. Yeah. I mean, they were on different pages all together. They got away with one. Second and ten. Bono guns it to Cash. It's a nine-yard gain. It'll be third and one at the 34-yard line. Well, so far, the story of this ball game is Kansas City being unsuccessful on two fourth and very short yardage attempts. Both times not even close to getting the first down. Stuffed completely by the Miami Dolphins defense. Third and one. Of course neither one of those two will be the most celebrated fourth and short of the weekend that wasn't converted. Fake mm. to Allen. Into the waiting arms of Derek Walker for a first down at midfield. Lewis Oliver pops him. Uh, fine concentration on the part of Walker. That ball of kind of waffling out there, hung up there, and he knew he was going to get pounded, and he was. But he came down with the ball and gets the first down. Well, if you don't have an appreciation of what it takes to catch a football like this and then sustain a hit like that and hold on to the football. Lewis that Oliver is, can hit you too. That's a magnificent play. Here's Allen cutting it back to the outside and picking up nine to the 40 yard line. Michael Stewart makes the tackle. And the Chiefs starting to make a little noise. Yeah, a little sense of urgency yep. and as Allen tried to hustle back to the huddle. Time ticking away. 84 yards tonight for Marcus coming off his 124 yard performance last week. Second and one as Marino looks on from the sideline. Anders in motion. And Bono surveys, goes deep, underthrows it, and Davis is there on his knees at the 12 yard line. He was wide open, had to drop to his knees, and hauls it in. You know, Davis made a great play, and Bono saw it. A little rollout. They had that covered deep. Davis saw that he was going to be covered. 
He pulled up. He's right on the same page with Bono. Bono reading and watch this. He knows he's going to be covered deep. A little out move. He sees the coverage. He stops. And Bono is right there with him. Good stuff. Great adjustment by Davis in the 12 yard line. First and 10. Cash in motion. And to the six yard line, Keith Cash. Second down and three upcoming. Kansas City in the second half, no points on the board, but Paul Hackett's team has been marching up and down the field. There it is, 220 yards in the half and 301 in the game for KC. And we've talked about how Kansas City has won ugly all year long. They've three overtime victories. They've come from behind. They've had to, been able to do it whenever they've had to do it. And they're threatening again. 5-10 to go. Second and three. Good fake to Anders. Bono throws. It's caught in the back of the end zone by Slaughter. Touchdown, Kansas City. What a great play action fake by Bono. Beautiful fake. Throws the Miami defense. Gave Slaughter time to get clear in the back of the end zone. Well, the, whoever it is, if that's Terrell Buckley on Slaughter, he falls completely to the ground. That's why Slaughter is wide open on this play. Webster Slaughter makes a break from the line of scrimmage, and he is wide open as his man is prone. Ooh. Oh, Elliott, who missed two extra points last week, bangs one off the upright. Oh, Lynn Elliott is in a major slump. That is hard to do. Kick the ball. Marty Schottenheimer's Chiefs trying to clinch a first round bye, which they'll do. Don Shula's team just trying to stay very much alive in the playoff chase. Marcus Allen and his group trying to go 12 and 2. And again, if the Chiefs can win two of the remaining three, including this one, they have home field advantage and the road to the Super Bowl would go through Kansas City, at least on the AFC side. First down 10, Kansas City at the 13 yard line of Miami with two minutes to go. Dolphins up by seven, and the Chiefs have two timeouts remaining. Bono on first down, retreating, buying time, throwing it out of bounds. Dane and Hughes, the intended receiver. Great coverage by the Miami secondary. Indeed it was. Bono had plenty of time to get a, a three-step and get rid of the ball, but there was fine coverage downfield. He comes out of the pocket. Good scrambler. Has kind of sneaky speed. Just threw that away to avoid any possible interception. Second and 10 at the 13. A buck 52 left in regulation. Marcus. To the nine yard line, setting up a critical third down and six. Brian Cox with the tackle. And in fact, it's so critical that Kansas City's going to talk this one over. Third and six, timeout KC, their second. Well, coaches will tell you that they live for these moments. The incredible adrenaline flow, the rush that goes with. Having it all on the line in the final minutes. Well, this well, is what Sean Shula, Shula talked night? about it last night. He said, uh, this season notwithstanding, it's, it's game day. It's being on the field. It's the competition. And you know Marty feels the same way about it. Well, the one, you know, a couple things to mull around here while you're chewing on things. One is if Kansas City scores sometime within the next 20 or 30 seconds, that's a lot of time for Dan Marino to get back down the field. Let's assume they kick the extra point and tie up this football game. There's time for Dan Marino to make some noise to get his team into field goal. And they, the Dolphins do have a good field goal kicker in Stoyanovic. He beat Kansas City in the 90 playoffs to the 58-yarder. Third down and six from the nine. Oh, no throws, and it's dropped in the end oh. zone by Vanover. Samaric Vanover 
with Michael Stewart on the coverage, dropped it. So that was a play that appeared to be worthy of the time they spent on it during the timeout. Evander will tell you he should have had it. It's thrown a little behind him. Not an easy catch, but one he should have had. Terrific speed, just accelerates away from Vincent, who fell. Oh, you've mm. got to catch that one. Right on the hand. Well, again, Miami's season pretty much at stake here on fourth down. And it's lofted to the end zone and broken up! Well, Buckley comes up big when he has to. He went back to Darrell Buckley, and he makes the play. This crowd was almost silent a few moments ago, holding their collective breaths, and now the chant of defense. Webster Slaughter at 6-1, Terrell Buckley at 5-9. The fade pattern, a real all-or-nothing shot, and that ball really too well played by Terrell Buckley to be a completion. Off the hands of Buckley and then the helmet of Slaughter. The deflection there, no way Slaughter's going to yeah. handle that. So now Miami at the 10-yard line. Kansas City can stop the clock only once. Which they'll do, I'm sure, after this first play. Marino sets up in a kneel-down formation. Puts it down. Kansas City now will take a timeout. Yeah. They've been calling for it, and a few seconds ticked off the clock. Miami with two more plays would take it down to four seconds, and it would be fourth down. They'd still have to snap it. Kansas City, number three. With the clock operator, please reset the clock to 126. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's right. Yep. Good work by Johnny Greer and his staff. Well, after losing three in a row, the Dolphins come back and beat a team with a winning record in the Atlanta Falcons. They now beat the team with the best record in the NFC if they go on and win this ball game, in the AFC, rather, and all of football, for that matter. And Don Shula and Tom Olivadotti have got to feel like maybe they've turned the corner. There, there has to be a fourth down snap in here because you've got a, a minute and 26. Can I point out something? They could very well give it up for safety. They could, but they're yeah. going to have to have a fourth down snap before the sequence is over. If they could, then there'd be, should be four seconds, roughly yeah. four seconds. Now six because they put yeah. the extra couple they of could. seconds, assuming Marino takes it all the way down. And the safety, taking the safety is a ploy that Don Shula has used many oh, yeah. times in the past. Remember, at the end of the play, the play clock goes to 40. The other thing they could do is run a play that maybe takes a couple of seconds off the clock because they're, they're right down on the edge here. They could avoid, conceivably, a fourth down snap if they take enough time in the running of the play. Well, I'm sure that's what they discussed over in the mm -hmm. sidelines. It is second down and 11. That's exactly what they're doing. And that's what they plan to do here is formally gets stopped up at the 8. The play clock on the whistle goes to 40. Shula looking at the clock. And they're going to be right on the edge of having to snap it or not snap it on fourth down at the end of this game. What you could do here is, is give it to Parmalee and let him go parallel to the line of scrimmage and run around and try to burn off mm -hmm. an extra five or six seconds and then just hook slide in. All right, there's the, the game clock and the play clock. They better hustle up there if they're even going to get this off. It is third down and 12. <laughs> Marino takes it down to one. And now Bernie goes up to the 10-yard line, and that will just about do it. Yeah, it does. They, they took enough time off yeah. the, the clock in those two plays not to have to snap it on fourth down. Schiller, again, a hero. Yeah. Oh, they love him in Miami now. He's hot again. Well, I, I think they're back to like. I'm not sure if it's all the way back to love. <laughs> Win number 346. Yep. They'll love him next week if he beats Buffalo in Buffalo. Yes. True love. And speaking of respect, there's a yep. great deal right there between those two guys. Two dear friends. You put them on a football field, they'll try to beat each other's brains out. But they're very close friends, both serve on the competition committee. 
mutual respect. I think Don was very appreciative of Marty's comments publicly this week as well in support of the beleaguered Shula, but he's not as beleaguered as he was a fortnight ago. His team is 8-6 as they win 13-6. We'll be back.